642. Are there any adjustments or additions to the agenda? To the agenda? Go ahead, Duncan. Do we know what the status of the open meeting law compliance is with regard to the timing of the agenda? Posted. Has it, has it been posted 48 hours? Goes on. Uh, I send it out within 48 hours, and Lydia and I have been trying to work on a way. When I work from, it's a good question. When I work from home, I can't get it on a board, and so Lydia and I are trying to work out a way where she'll come in on a, either do it Friday or Saturday, and then take an hour of her time the following week. Uh, so was it was yeah. it in this fact week? It, on Friday? This week was not. So the, the posting went out at 11 o'clock at night, basically? On Saturday. Okay. So I'm going to make a motion uh, acknowledging, or I, I won't make a motion, I want to acknowledge that we did not meet open meeting law requirement with regard to posting. I will make the recommendation we continue to have the meeting as if it were properly posted with a caveat that we ratify any actions that we take tonight at a duly uh, warned and make sure it's on as an agenda action item um, at our next next really regular scheduled meeting. Do I need to make that as a motion or can I make it as a suggestion? I think it could just be an understanding. Uh, is there any concern with that from anybody? Um, I would just ask Duncan, are we going to be able in your imagination to approve all of our, or ratify all of our decisions in one motion, or? In your imagination. In my imagination, <laughs> that would be exactly how I think Are that if we're going to, well, I think that if we're actually ratifying, we should not have a blanket motion. I think we should read out what the past motions were, and then ratify. Because if we're, if it's about warning the agenda for a meeting, and the decisions were outside of that compliance, then any decision, we can go through a list. But if we're not going through the list, and instead we're just saying, and not having on our next agenda what those motions were, then how are we properly awarding the action? You know what I mean? We can just come up with a list. We'll just compile a list to put it in the... I don't care how we do that. I'm yeah, just suggesting enough. that we continue with the meeting tonight recognizing that we missed open meeting law uh, agenda posting requirements yeah. and we'll be back on our actions on the next board meeting. Okay, sounds like we have consensus there. The other, um, other item I would like to add to the agenda, hopefully it'll be a quick one, I was asked by Ron what the board wants to do with regard to bridge repairs. Um, specifically the rail. That could come up under his item, right? Item number seven. Yeah, yeah. We'll put that it as seven D. Yep. So railroad street bridge rail. Okay, we can add it. Yeah. I'm not sure if we should do it in this meeting or the next, but we should have an executive session to discuss potential legal action. Um, we do the village uh, reply back to the letter that they sent regarding River Road East. Mm. It could be the next meeting. Let's do the next meeting. Yep. It's the next meeting. Are you right? We do our response. Yep. Okay. Would it be appropriate to, with regard to that, we have a letter. We have. We have requested review of the entire question from the town attorney. Should we have the town attorney look at the response letter we've got? Or? Have we not already done that? Don't yeah, we should. I should not. Let's, let's, yep, yeah, we should before our meeting. Can you do that, Tom? Can you provide that response letter? They might, they might say this time when we talk about that. Okay, any other additions or adjustments to the agenda? 
Could I ask a question? I think uh, Duncan brings up a good point, and Lydia and I haven't come to a, an agreement yet um, on how to best do it. Would the board uh, be amenable if she came in after hours to take an hour, an hour off of the following week? So say if she came in on a Friday or a Saturday, post that agenda, would the board be okay if she then the following week, so she wouldn't go into overtime, left earlier. No, I think we need to get it done on Thursday. Okay. It um, doesn't need to be the full packet for a posting. Just the, 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 just the cover sheet. Just the needs to be a posting. Got it. So then, I think you and I need to set schedules probably for Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. That's what we talked about earlier. Yeah. Okay. Check. I'm yeah. here for number eight. Are you on number one right now? <laughs> We started very late, so yes. Okay, We're not quite um, to number one yet. Should I stick around for anything, or? Uh, uh, it's going to be a little while before we get to number eight. You're welcome to stay, or you can wander, whatever you'd like. I'll be back. Okay. Um, you can go to one of our good restaurants. So, I'm guessing like 20 minutes or so, just in ish, 15 or 20. Okay. Um, any uh, anything else on additions or adjustments? Review invoices and orders. Do you want that back for your question? Uh, yeah, my question is around. I don't need a back. I think I can speak to it. My question is around the boarding. The sixteen hundred dollars, or was it thirteen hundred? It was thirteen. Um, for the dog. Was that? I would just like to. Long sum. There's a backup to it. The backup is in the packet. Yeah. Uh, actually, if we can pull the backup. Jackie, can I see the file itself, not the orders, but yeah. the, the just folder? Just this folder. And that one. Too. It's sticking out the top. There's one category of it that is the, the vast majority of it, but I'm not sure exactly how that number was come to. The, the number of incidents on there. So there are 317 calls. Is that I thought it was 37. It looked like it was 17 crossed out to be 37. That's okay, like yeah, that yeah. math works better. Okay, so 37 calls. The question I have, I guess, is these are not all the calls around the dog. That I can attest for sure. Um, do we, like, is there a way, some way we can see the backup of those calls? Like, that's a lot of calls, and I worry about the rationale behind them. Um, and I'm also just curious about. 234 miles. Like that's a lot of miles. What was the what was the what was the mileage for? Well, I know they said that the dog had taken what four different mm -hmm. temperate tests. So that might have been in different places. Driving in Vermont that's adds up point. quickly. <laughs> Emily, can we get some sort of report as to? What's yeah. happened with the dog? Is it, do we still have it? Uh, the dog was adopted. Um, it's no longer in the town's control. And that's, uh, so we no longer are in possession of the dog. And that means no longer in the control of one of our animal control officers either? Um, it was actually adopted by the animal control officer. But um, <coughs> we had a conversation that this was a clear separation and created uh, an adoption that from this day forward, the town holds no liability for all future uh, risks the dog may pose. So um, just, it's no longer in the town's control. Um, and I asked for a clear invoice so that there was a start and stop date for her services and a start and stop date for the adoption. Um, and that's just, I wasn't really comfortable with it, but I also didn't want to keep paying for a dog that we didn't we probably had too long, probably two months too long, to be honest. Um, and it, it needed to end, and that was the fastest and smoothest move forward. 
in the ACO offices are aware of the fact that they should not be taking a dog into those circumstances? Yes, uh, we had um, some hard conversations regarding the role of an ACO that is for public safety in picking up strays and that we are not a facility to accept surrendered dogs. Um, and we went over uh, the state law and the ordinance as to uh, what their job is and why we have ACOs or animal patrol officers. And um, it's not about the protection of the dog, it's about the protection of the general public. And just, that's the focus. and needs to be the focus moving forward. Tom, do you have any idea where the um, 37 number comes from? Uh, I'm assuming it's just calls for strays. Um, Is that for everybody? I think it would be for this particular one, right? It is the weekly pay law for health office will control um, for Crystal very specifically from the date range of August 16th to, uh, to November 2nd. Yeah, so 37 calls in one week? No, it's from August 16th no, August. to November. Yeah. It so seems like it's a months. cumulative months. log for this this one animal. The other question I have is that the numbers look like the column adds up to, well, I don't even know what it adds up to, honestly, let me tell you. Um, it doesn't all add up, though. 55 plus 70. Our recommend we hold off on that invoice and uh, remove it from the SAP. I'll follow the crystal and then report back on both six. That sounds great. Just so you know, the column adds up to $1,091, and then underneath it, it has 69 days at $15 per day for housing and feed, which is uh, $1,035. So the total invoice is over $2,000. And based on all of our prior conversations around this dog, you can imagine my concern about that. This went on too long. I mean, yeah, exactly. Um, the town has a 17 day responsibility, 7 day notice, 10 day holding, and after that point, um, we, we need to have better plans going forward. End of story. Like this was really a, the terms for which it came and the terms for which it was held was, was not so. Yeah, okay, so we won't pay that one. Um, Rosemary, what do you need? Do you need anything to not to pay that up for now? I'll just make a move from over there. You know, I know. You, you mentioned 70, 17 days. The way the ordinance is written, I believe that is a little unclear. But it refers to an additional 10 days from the date of posting. So it's not necessarily 17 days, it's 10 days from the date of posting. Correct. Right. So it could be 10 days. It could be if it gets posted right away. Yeah. I think Dean, Dean made that. The reason I say is Dean, Dean said very clearly at the last meeting that it's 17 days according to your I, I don't necessarily agree with that. And I sent out that, that policy, I think it was from 1998, and I found a model dog policy from VLCT, which has now taken into account all known liabilities that the league has experienced. And so it might be worth looking, this is a great time with this experience, to look at that, modify it to match Johnson's needs, and then adopt it move forward. And put it on our to-do list. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, consider approving minutes for November 6th. Motion approved. Second. Second. Oops. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is that an aye, Duncan? Aye. Uh, select board of issues and concerns. I have one. Go for it. He was talking about his aye. Oh, you're only going to have one. I don't want to issue and concern. No. Do you have any? I don't think so. More than one. I was going to say, usually has more than one. I know. Well, I was waiting. I, I, I hope at the beginning of the year we'll have a meeting where we'll discuss our priorities for the following year. I yeah, that usually should. that's uh, right after the new board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I really want to.
drill down on our priorities. So uh, the flood ruined our priorities. We have a new I, priority. I totally understand that. It's actually, uh, a lot of at our highest priority, I'm, we checked on the list. At our second highest, highest priority, three. Was the third? Uh, industrial part and community economic development and TA. Yeah. Yeah. We've we accomplished our and I priorities. I just want to keep us on thinking about that. I'm really concerned about continued flooding. I just listened to the National Weather Service talk about. We're going we're to fly again. Yeah. I think it's a great idea, Mark, that we should do that. You know, I, I personally would like to have, I think it's great to try and get the community input, the dots and all of that stuff, but I think it's really good to have us think about it too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Separate from the public. Well, I think it's a process. continuation of the process we did with after the flood where we talked about what, you know, what happened in the 48, you know, 72 hours after. Okay, so what are we going to do? What are our plans for their next flood? <laughs> you to bring that up? Um, yep. I think we need big development plans too. Big, big. Yeah. Um, okay, plan purchases for consideration heating tank for the town garage. Is that mostly uh, just an FYI? Yeah, we already know about it. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Do we, okay. It was just over a thousand dollars, but it was <coughs> emergency. But it was all the different parts put together. It was just. It was a thousand fifteen, and then a, another invoice of twenty some odd dollars at Farm and Garden. So yeah. it was under a thousand fifty dollars. Well, the policy talks about emergency need of emergency need to right? Yep, it does. Yeah. Okay. We're good. So we're good. Thanks for taking care of that. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Updated financials, Rosemary, has the floor. Which ones did she pass out? These ones. Revenue is at 92% of budgeted. And that night is just primarily a big increment from the state early. Yes, we've gotten all our highway money, pilot money. The only thing we haven't received from the state is the annual maintenance of grand list. That usually comes in March. Okay. Can you think of any reason why um, Wreck and Skate Park, or sh well, Wreck is showing well, rec, I'm un almost no income. I'm unable to get into Sports Engine to verify the revenue, which I'm hoping to get situated this week. So those, some of those zeros might end up being real numbers? Yes, okay. yes. I know gymnastics is on you, and there's money for soccer, and there's money for basketball. And then skate park is showing absolutely nothing. Is, is that normal for me? If I read this correctly, Rosemary, it looks like our state and federal income is up substantially from what was budgeted. Yes, that's right. You always try to be conservative on yeah, those numbers. And I understand. In, so that's it's almost a hundred thousand dollars, seven eighteen versus mm -hmm. eight thirteen. Mm -hmm. And there'll be more to come out. Yeah, yeah. thirteen to nine for the EEG. I guess we didn't put the right one for that one. I mean, I appreciate our conservativeness, but do where do we put in this um, income? I'm going by taxes. So we You're going to have to speak up so people can hear you. Everybody speaks softly here. <laughs> or I can't hear. We do not. What? Since we're on a cruel basis, we don't, do not budget for going by taxes. Okay. But we know that that's 
that happens every single year, and you probably have a sense of what it is. It ends up being pretty close to consistent. Yeah. Would you say like 50 grand or probably more? Oh, it's more than that. More than that. Because we still own. Now, I don't this mean the total tax, so oh. I mean like, the penalties and interest. Oh, penalties and interest? Yeah. So we budgeted 17500 for penalties and interest, total interest between the and the right. and the right. So, yeah. well, we haven't collected that. Well, penalties and interest won't okay. into the low amount in May. The interest is already 46.84% down, so. Yeah. <clears throat> but we, we do not ever put that in our budget when we're building a budget. No. It's in when we have cash on hand. Okay. And it shows the budgeted amount right here, the first yeah, column. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Um, Rosemary, mm -hmm. the, under the general government, no, looking at expense. Under general government expense, it has health officer services actual spend of four thousand four hundred and fourteen dollars. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Nothing for the health officer salary. But then, if you look at public safety expense, it has animal control expenses and health officer expense listed there too. But we don't have salaries, right? Like, I don't understand the salary. Um, salaries for um, health officer is under municipal payroll. So we don't, but they're not on salary. They're like time and expense kind of pay structure. It's just a language that never uses when it was set up. I don't think it's like salary versus hourly. It's just a well, we switched though. Like last year, we switched from. Um, What's the word I'm missing? Stipend. Thank you. We switched from stipend to expense. So if it's expense based, I would think that it would not fall under salaries. And instead, it would fall under, well, we have it budgeted under salaries. Yeah, and it has to go that way so it can pull and do it with payroll so it can pull the median FICA. It's like coded that way. So are you saying that it needs to stay under general government? I disagree. Or I think that there are pieces of that, in that again, in that file, there are pieces of the form that are human resource related, and there are pieces of the form that are expense related. Yes, the, definitely the uh, third day taking care of dog, that is an expense, it's not a payroll. Yes, the housing and the food and the mileage, all of those things are expense. So those are showing up under the public safety? Those should show up under the public safety. Okay. And then what about health officer? That confuses me too because, well, maybe health officer would all be. Okay, health officer, I feel like we're missing things because I feel like maybe it was last budget year, so this could be wrong, but I feel like um, Dean bought the. Safety vests, vests, but well, maybe that was last year. That was this year. That was this year. Okay, yeah. and also, I know that he's had time as safety officer. I don't think he's submitted. He hasn't submitted any. He only does it once or twice a year. Oh, well, that's super helpful. Okay. But those, those safety vests must have, we must have been direct belt for those. If people are holding expenses, we should ask for them within 30 days of their accrued expense. I can't remember whether whether he said the he wanted those safety vests for air control. Generally, you probably wouldn't. No, maybe not. Maybe it was off office. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.
Can I ask you a question about delinquent taxes? Is there a policy for delinquent taxes for like years delinquent versus tax sale? <coughs> or is it just as the delinquent tax collector feels it's time? We do have delinquent tax policy. We do? Yeah. We haven't had a tax sale since the pandemic, pandemic which we really need to start having a year. Yeah. If, um, before. if the board wanted to do a tax sale and amended the policy to match years delinquent, then you might be able to budget based on the amount of delinquency and interest at that time. But, that, but you, I, I don't think it, you know, it's, a, it's one way that you might be able to track some income, but I think without a policy to match, it would, it's hard to budget for delinquent taxes. Honestly, I'm okay to see that revenue not budgeted and then come in. Okay. Like I saved the day, got yeah. the money in. It generally works out to be, it's never been an issue. You know, the, the amount that goes to like what is pretty much covered by the amount that's collected on an annual basis. So it's, it's rules net zero. Okay. What else do you have worth calling out, Rosemary? Anything? What's your sense overall of how, how we're doing? Do you, do you, I know at one point you talked about possibly thinking about needing a letter of credit if we incur some big bills. Yeah. Well, it's possible to, but the, um, the interest rates now are at least five and a half percent on money value. And that's a very good meeting coming up in the next couple of weeks regarding funding. The meeting that happened last Tuesday, I think, um, was the VLCT meeting about FEMA funding. And they use a slightly lower rate that comes from a federal rate, but it's like 4.75 right now, I think they said. Uh, you have to show a loss in revenue in order to qualify for it, and you can get up to, and it is about short-term cash flow. That's the purpose of this, is to provide short-term cash flow. And additionally, I'm not remembering the words that, the words that were used, but the state also has a program, uh, and I, it doesn't have the, quite the same restrictions, <coughs> um, and it has a much lower interest rate, and all I took away was a much lower interest rate. Um, and I want to say the cap on that, the cap on that might have been a little bit lower, that might have been 250000 um, where the female is 5000 I believe, uh, or vice versa, but I think the state is lower. Do you have any idea when the insurance funding would come through? Is that before or after everything's complete? Insurance should come through first, and then FEMA can, will make their and they come second, so. Yeah, why don't we do insurance on uh, Well, we received some. Well, I don't know if we received it. We signed off on the salt shed. We have an amount on the municipal building. I think Ron is handling it like 68,000 because it's cost to rebuild minus depreciation. And so I think it's 68,000 in the municipal building and then FEMA will cover the rest at 87 and a half percent and then the state picks up, I think, 5%, and we're on the hook for that last 7.5%. Um, that's a great question. I'll reach out to Ron, and I'll copy everyone in, just to see where we are. Um, Harry Crawford mm -hmm. is our um, personal working with the DLCP. So I, I think that's probably the next step, is to see where they're at. Buildings outside of the floodplain, like the municipal building, could move quickly, so we should see a check for you right, right away. It's the ones that are within the floodplain that they're holding off, BLCP is holding off on making that decision, because they, they only have a limited amount of money to spend towards those buildings. Uh, they have a five Recording in progress. Um, uh, $5 million cap, so they are pooled, like the library is pooled with all these other buildings throughout the state, where the municipal building falls outside of that because it's on the floodplain. Um, my, I'll, I'll follow up and I'll... Where's um, Smith from the BLC 23? Um, we always have a passive grant and 
It yeah, starts January 1st. And it's going to be 50% for ergonomic office equipment, so desks and chairs. But we have to wait until after January 1st before we can apply, apply and get approval. That's really good. Yeah. He's going to try to get 100% because this year was 100% of the grant period ago in January. I did talk to him too that we can use the $5,000 we have towards contents. So if they're willing to, they might be able. He's going to try to match it so that we, if we don't get 100%, we can use that portion of the $5,000 for contents towards that. Um, he has to, he's waiting for a decision from, I think, Fred's opinion. But he might reach out to you with that answer. I'll follow up with him as well. Has he recommended them um, to the guests? How do you feel about that? Yeah, for sure. Oh, it's, it's, standing. Up and down. <laughs> it's not yeah. just standing, it's yeah. standing and sitting. Yeah. Push a button. I'm just asking. I care about Rosemary standing and sitting. That's who cares. I know you don't. We do have one standing guest, but downstairs, but probably the electronics got in the water. So just to be clear, can you make sure that all gets coordinated with Ron in terms of not hurting ourselves in terms of female reimbursement for any of that? Yeah. Office, office equipment. FEMA does not pay for contents, I, I believe. And so the content is limited to what the insurance covers, is my understanding. Okay. Um, but I'll, I'll follow up tomorrow. Because the insurance adjuster actually been through and looked at damage deaths and stuff. Um, Yes, I mean they must have. I mean it wasn't during my time, but they already came back with the cost to rebuild and the replacement cost. Well, cost to rebuild is different than contents. The contents that would be part of the. Yeah, we we had to produce a list for contents, and the library just gave, uh, handed their list in today for their contents. And the skate park contents is uh, being worked on today, just today as well. So, um. Don't believe the contents of the skate park is covered by insurance because it's outdoor, considered outdoor equipment. There's a word that has to do with outside. I don't remember what it is. Call it exterior. I love that. Um, okay. Are we good to move or fix the wall? Well, let's just ask Rosemary one question. Maybe we can look into it. We have a tax anticipation <laughs> reserve fund. If we had to tap into, if we needed funds, do you think we could legally tap into that tax anticipation reserve fund to meet us a, a, a deficit or a, a financial need or maybe How do we know it gets reimbursed in time? Like we, it needs to cover a certain, it needs to be at a certain level that's the intended purpose, right? And we're basically talking about borrowing from ourselves. So how do we know that if we needed to tap into those funds, the reimbursement would, we would have reimbursement in our hands in order to tap into those funds? Same way we would do it if we needed to borrow from some other entity. We partly from the lead that we could borrow from the ACA money. The ACA money is you know, already in the general fund, that 560000 or whatever. So when that moves in, that's going to provide that much surplus. Well, I understand that quite a bit of that's already committed. Well, yeah, but do we know when the time? Is it possible maybe? This is a, this is a great question, and, I, and something I have a big concern about. Is it possible to meet with a board member to kind of make a plan for, like, for that spending and reimbursement? Because I, but the industrial part is going to take a lot. The stormwater at Vermont Co-op is going to take a lot, and then we have FEMA. Um, the stormwater that's not our is not part of ARPA. It's not us. Uh, but it's uh, expense. It's cash flow. In that. It is cash flow, but it's not committed ARPA funds. Uh, yeah, I mean, I understand that it's not. I'm more worried about. So we have to we have to put the building back together, we have to put the library back together, we have to spend money on the stormwater. But to spend money on the industrial part, 
We actually didn't commit any of that ARPA money to those. We did it in theory, but the ARPA money really is just in the general fund now. And then there's that idea of creating an article to, to use unexpended funds to create an account for what the intent of those ARPA funds are for. But for cash flow purposes, I, I don't think actually think that's true. I don't think that the ARPA funds are in our, I, it's not that I don't think. ARPA funds, all of the ARPA funds should not be in our general fund because our motion was to take everything that wasn't already allocated and bring it into general funds. So we need to keep ARPA where it is. I, okay, I, I thought it was different than that, but um, regardless, we have a cash flow issue and I think we need a timeline for when cash is going out and when cash is coming in. And we have almost the entire year's budget um, lining up for expenses, you know, we have 1.7 for the industrial park, we have 600,000 for the stormwater, we have 600,000 for the mitigation of the, of the library and municipal building, and like all of that money is going out, all of it's expect, most of it's expected to come back, and that's that's good, right? But just we just have to make sure that it goes out and comes back in some top organized timeline, so we don't <coughs> run into cash flow, and and I, I don't know if, if we could. Like, I'm not sure who should take the time to make that timeline, but it, having that line up would be really helpful as we move forward with these projects. Um, I think if you can you can work with Ron or whomever to define timeline of the things that you know about, well, would be a first when, step. When is it constructed on that stormwater project? Right. Like and answering all those questions is that's the first step. So the, wait, let me finish. That's the first step. So I think you can you can just take that and run with it and say, here's a timeline of the expenses that we expect. Excellent. And after that is put together, or actually probably at the same time, we do need to have an understanding of allocated ARPA in the fund that it's in now, and then taking that balance and putting it in our general fund, because we do need to get the balance in our general fund. And then we'll be in a position to see cash flow or a better position to see cash flow. And cash flow is Rosemary's. As treasurer, like that is her wheelhouse. She owns it. Absolutely. Yeah. Have you heard when um, Fibernet's going to walk in on The 50,000, right, that part of that ARPA allocation. So that money stays in that ARPA account until somebody says, we need our money. Yeah. What's the deadline that that has to show up in our general fund? Is that January 1? No. no the end of, end of well, it's already allocated, right? The motion. So it has to be spent by 2026. Right. I just want to make sure that we've done the paperwork to make to have it show up as, yes, we moved it into general fund. Which makes that this current budget year. We are supposed to be using ARPA funds as an offset to our current year budget. Uh, that's what so it that's, ends up as surplus at the end of the year. That's why this conversation right. is a little confusing to me. Yeah. I'm easily confused, but I just, you know, when we talk about ARPA money sitting around, I want to know that it's in our general fund, even if it's just by accounting means. Um, yeah, there's two very specific reservations that uh, ARPA funding. One is the 50000 for the CUD. Mm -hmm. The other was 46000 or so for the engineering for the light industrial park. And then we committed by virtue of the grant application 300 and some odd thousand. Yeah, whatever well, is not letter. Yeah. So, so I mean, it's committed per se, but at the same time we're using that money in the budget as an offset, so that it ends up as surplus at the end of the year, which we can then designate. Yeah. To, answer, the issue of to answer your direct question, I don't think Ron's really the one to talk about for a timeline, and I don't think getting an idea on the construction plans and maybe talking to Randall, he should have an idea on where and we stand for the industrial park by now. And getting that timeline built out, I don't know what single board member would be able to build that timeline. But when 
we last talked about the co-op stormwater, right? Money goes out, it's invoiced at the end of the month, state writes check back, right? It's not a long-term cash flow issue. That's like well, 10 days. I, I there's, there, if there's 15 days with no money on the check for cancellation. Yeah. But <clears throat> the answer on tax anticipation reserve fund would answer that. It'd help. I mean, it's $150,000 on the tax anticipation reserve fund. Is it a Did we start the year at like. Three, four, seven, and a half. No, almost that, three, just shy of the 289 or something. Well, if we can use that, that would certainly help out a lot with the flexibility. And we would have to pay ourselves back, but. Yeah, the odd part is it's for anticipation of tax revenue, not anticipation of grant return. Uh, there is $15,000. I know that's not a huge sum of money for what we're talking about. And the grants reserve fund, I believe that was set up to for grants, right? right. So could, could we not use that? I know that's not a huge buffer, but, but it does you, help. You know, and I think if you have better conversations with contractors on these larger projects to say, hey, we need to get paid back before we can pay you. Are you okay moving forward on services? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just part of the part of the agreement. And I've <clears> done that a bunch in my previous job, where you just have better conversations. We're going to buy this truck. It's going to show up in July, but we're going to the checks coming September first. And so, if we if we can have that organization and that cash flow timeline, then we can have those conversations so that contractor can move forward with the work, and then we can move forward with payment as well. It's harder when you're dealing with some grant money. Very much so. For, yeah. No, there's procurement policies that they have to follow. And yeah. I don't but, know who would the best person to work with on a timeline would be. I'll, I'll give it my best shot, and then I'll probably send it out to everybody and anyone who wants to. Yeah. The co op should know what their timeline is, right? Uh, the co op, um, so I forget the guy's name. John. John at the co op. I've been trying to connect with, um, her name is Nicole Streer, and so she works at the state, and she is, uh, has been assigned to that grant. <coughs> so I haven't confirmed any of the details of that yet. Um, we haven't been able to have that meeting. And then as soon as I know, then I need to sit down with John. Hash out how are we going to move forward with this, and what's the timeline for construction, and what's the timeline um, for how, how we're going to how we're going to bill and how we're going to pay. It's my understanding now that the town is paying everything and then getting reimbursed for it, and the co-op is just providing the physical ground to manage that stuff. But you know that to be determined. I think we need better understanding. Okay. Um, anything else on financials? Um, current taxes, the collection is lagging from the past few years. Currently, we're at 55.87% collected, and the prior two years have been closer to 59% collected. Could be that people that have been flooded haven't paid their taxes. I have investigated it too much. A couple of them definitely are. All things considered, that's not a huge discrepancy. But I would I would not have been surprised to see a bigger a bigger delta in the collections. The well, person the person saw not. what really sticks out to me. Yeah. So, that's almost double. Double what? Percentage from the past two years. Oh. Okay. How, do you, how do you do this with people like that try and pay all their taxes in one fast week? Does that all show up as taxes coming in the first installment? Yes. A lot of people pay the whole year. Yeah. Then everybody's state payment gets divided into the three. Into the four um, installments. 
and given the fact that the flood was July 10th or 11th, it's not terribly surprising how some of the people will say that. Yeah. Yeah, July doesn't work. So the second installment is very close. And they handed out a list of potential taxes for last year. So this might end up being the basis for a tax sale? Yes. <clears throat> After the new year. Well, two of them are flooded trailers, at least two of them. Yeah, any small amounts under a thousand don't lose you. The board has decided not to tax the other. Yeah. Because we don't want to own them. Which is most of them, by the way. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Rosemary. Uh, Jason, you're up. All right. So in my report, uh, a lot of the stuff in the recent accomplishments was not over on the last meeting when I was here. But we did finish the trails in the arbitrary. And one thing I would like to ask the board is if we could find out, me and Tom have talked about it, Maybe looking up and seeing where our right of way is. Change the road down there a little bit. It all leans towards the apple tree. Where, where are we talking, Tracy? Uh, down to the arbor room. Yeah, that right of way. What's that between Perkins and. Yeah, okay. I don't know the other ones off the top of my head. Person, but yeah. There's an apple tree. That's what the village truck slid into. And the road leans towards the apple tree and goes down in there. It's all grass covered. And they wanted us to fix it the top so and the left, so we did, but it's not a real good road for us to use because it gets slippery when we're treading on it back and forth. And we can't get our equipment down, only the dump trailer. So that's why we were using the village to start to because that apple tree and where it is. Hmm. My recollection is there's only a 10 foot wide right away, hmm. and it follows the property line. So I have no idea if where the road is is actually where the mm -hmm. right of way is shown. Well, we literally work in the place the land record was start digging. What did you say that? <laughs> <now? laughs> so obvious. Oh, I'm sorry. I think we. Should, I think we should just pull the land record. Look it up. There is there is a fun. survey. Bob, Bob Frey did a survey. Ah, um, it's in recent times. So there, there is a survey that shows, in theory, where that 10 foot wide railway is supposed to be. Who was the landowner at the time that did the survey? Just so I can... Who was the landowner? Yeah, it would be the town at that time. I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember. I may still have a copy of it. Because I, I, I was looking at that when Sue Loving was interested in trying to put a water line yeah. down in there. Yeah. Is it worth investigating? You know, it's a beautiful spot. I mean, Doug Raiden's done an amazing job. His walking trails are now very inviting. Is it worth investigating? It means when I went and visited, it's, it's really a cool spot, right? And okay. I think it could bring a lot of good to the village. The piece that's missing is there's no parking and there's no road in. And so is there, could there be some mechanism to like maybe reserve arboretum parking? You know, like a sign on, on uh, I guess, I don't know if it's Clay Hill there or not, but Pearl Street. Like just having a sign that says arboretum parking this way and just 
you know, it's a really cool area, but you can't get there. It's, if, if you, even where you know, you know, even when you know where it is, it's hard to see, it's hard to find, and like that's like the last piece to making that like a really valuable asset. I, I don't know what the solution is, but I think if, if we could find that solution, it, it would really improve that property quite a bit. I think um, even just some signage that, like Jason said, on School Street that points them to that parking lot there. That's close enough where people can walk from there. You know, or on the website saying, you know, use municipal parking on School Street, or use the municipal parking where the firehouse was. Or... Um, so I want to keep us moving because I don't want to be here all night, frankly. And I like the idea, good in concept. If you want to send us a proposal of where you think parking should be, then right. let's have a then let's have a discussion. Right. And in I terms like of the road, like find where we own, where the right of way is, and then bring us something back that's more concrete, if, you, if that's what you're thinking. We're not looking for concrete, actually. And we don't want concrete, Asphalt. physical, and um, <clears throat> it doesn't have to be perfect, but just a little bit more. Are we talking about cash flow issues? Preferably mm -hmm. not slippery. And I, I would so, put some of that on the tree board, too. I mean, Yep. The Arboretum folks. I don't think you need to spend a lot of time on that. No. You've got plenty of other things to spend time on. I agree. Maybe there's a grant available. Is there anything okay. else, Jason? Yeah, what else you got, Jason? Uh, just we, we hung new banners in Railroad Street Bridge. And yeah, this looks great. The guardrails are all done in town except for there's one on the bridge that they had to order on it. School Street. They ordered the wrong one. Either they ordered it or the manufacturer sent them the wrong radius, so it was a little too short. So they're coming back. They're open by the end of the month for the first week of December to finish that. That's the last piece. Uh, we put them, they fixed the chain, or the there's doors in the back of part 19, and they put new hinges in for the doors. And uh, the only other thing I have is I'm looking for approval to spend. No more than twenty five hundred dollars on steel to build a new grizzly deck. To build a new what? Grizzly deck. That was you said that was um, something for gravel. Yeah, we we run all it's the sand through it all winter long to make sure the chunks aren't in. But we're also uh, repurposing it in the summertime to run uh, the ditching from the old ditches <coughs> that have already been stone lined. We're running it over the top of that to get to reclaim the stone that we did by this last summer. But it's been 15 plus years since uh, there was a deck built for it again. What's the time crunch on the seal? Uh, being that we're going to have to ratify decisions made tonight in our next meeting, I'd like to see stuff like that start making up under plan purchases. Um, but this, I get if you're in like a pinch or something. This was noticed today that some of the pipes are wearing through. So could you get a quote and forward it to Tom? We could act on it next meeting, and that doesn't put you guys too far behind. Yeah, if it breaks, and we're going to not be able to screen sand. Yeah. You could tell me no. I was just asking yeah. a question. I can tell him no if you want. All right, yeah. No. Everybody in here could. No, <laughs> no. So, like Jason, you know, okay, I hear you, like, we're reacting to no, like, if it breaks, we're in trouble. Yeah. Is it likely to break? I'm not an engineer. It's worn through in a couple spots. It could break. Okay, uh, fine. Just do it. Just let's. Okay, fine. It sounds like you need it because you're worried about it breaking. Exactly. And some of the pipes are already broken. So it's not extra money. I'm just asking to spend some out of my budget. Budget, yeah. So do we need a power wall? Yes. Long. No, it's above the spend amount that he's authorized to make. So yes, we do. You spread budget. sand today, did you? I'll make a motion to allow um, Jason to spend up to $2,500 on steel for a new grizzly deck. Is that the number? I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Um, and salt truck is all good. At the moment. And there was an issue with the Arboretum, which is why you were talking about the road. That's, that's the issue with the tree, yeah. <coughs> with the tree. And the road, if you're ever bored and walk down, you'll see where the road goes, and you'll see where the tree is. It goes right to the tree, so. 
I'm not rarely bored. I'm rarely bored. I know. Uh, so, and then the other thing I was going to ask you was the other thing. Oh, Better Roads Grant. Um, a email came through from VLCT about Better Roads, and I think we're qual we qualify for. I think that generally speaking, municipalities can apply every other year. That's how Better Roads works. I think. And I think that's how it works. And I think that we got a grant the first year we were on and not last year. I think we can apply for a grant again. But anyway, a Better Roads grant from through BL, like there's a posting from BLCT that would be worth looking into. Okay. So usually I get them from uh, Mobile Planning Commission, usually sends them out when Don't they, want, they want to the project. Wait. You can just go to BLCT at the end of the week for BLCT. Are you sure? It's just, it might not be the same better roads grant. Because she's saying it's from the LCP. It's all the same. It, I'm sure it's the same. All it's right. just the communication methods is probably going down two different channels. Okay. Um, but anyway, I just want to put that out there on your radar because that's where a lot of road funding comes from. Great roads grant is every other year, I think. Right? I know we did the, that was one that we did one way later. Yeah. The structure uh, is that goes through the better back roads. Better back roads are usually when you not yeah. better back roads is better roads. It's not there's not the word back. There's, at all. Yeah, there's two separate. They they're similar, but they're two separate. And one way lane was the one that we used. That she, so maybe we wouldn't qualify about. this time. I don't I know. Think we we just are. This would it. be the year. This can next after this okay. January would be the. We usually go after that every time. We're... Yeah, whenever we see anything closer for better roads, that's where like flag that because we usually get good funding from it. Uh, okay, cool. Anything else? Okay, Ron, I don't see online. Is Ron joining? He's on online. He's on Zoom. Oh, no, he's, uh, he's, he's at a meeting for Westbury. Sorry. He's not able to attend. Um, I guess that's how he was. Okay. You'll be sending me a packet. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Right. We're just going to okay. talk about it before. Yeah, I'm not sure how valuable this talk about it. You guys already have it. Okay. Um, did everyone take a look at the debris management plan? I have. I have. I have. Yeah. Okay. Simply. And you? Did anyone have feedback on it? Should we should we just provide feedback directly to Ron on that? You know, he's he's asking for that by knowing the twenty one. So yep. if we can provide that, it would be great. Cool. Yep. Good. Like reading for Thanksgiving. Yes. Yeah. Could have done it before. I didn't, but you could have. Uh, <laughs> next steps to follow up on the reimbursement for insurance with skip Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, the next item is the Railroad Street Bridge Rail that Duncan you were hoping Ron would be on for, but it sounds like he won't be. Is there anything additional around that? What were you looking for specifically on that? So, so I, I went out and straightened the bottom rail to get it, hopefully, to set the snow back and watch it. There is one baluster that is pretty badly bent. Um, I could fix that. Um, and there's one baluster that's missing, which represents a safety measure, which we definitely should fix. The ultimate question is, my own opinion, having done this work for some period of time when I own my own business, is if I do those repairs, it's always going to look like it was repaired. There's going to be dings in the bottom. Um, if, if we can live with that, um, fine and good. Ron really wants to know, though. My opinion is strongly that we should fix the bent baluster and replace the missing baluster, so that we remove a safety energy. That would that could be considered temporary measures. We may or may not get reimbursed for it. It's not a big deal. It's my time, um, and maybe the cost of the you know three foot section of three quarter inch steel. I think that should be done. The, the greater question is that Ron wants to know is, do we keep it on the FEMA list as a repair item, 
and get the entire section replaced with a new section? Or do we say close enough is good enough? And like ballpark, what does that cost? I don't know. Um, I know what it would have cost when I was doing the work, but that was 25 years ago. Okay, what well, would it have been? We'll just multiply that like 20. Well, it, it probably <laughs> would have been, grand, you know, replacing that section probably would have been, you know, a $300 bill. A 300 Now, 15000 So yeah. we're talking like, yeah, we're talking like 20, under 20000 Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I hope so. The, the minimum threshold is $3,800 to get... If, it, if it's under $3,800, it's not considered damage according to FEMA. If it's over $3,800, they, they will consider it as not. So one way to approach it would be, I can do the temporary repairs. At some point, we could say that's good enough. Um, the other thing we could do is, I believe there was a set of prints and plans for that. I'm virtually certain there's a cut sheet that shows the actual rail section, which is fabricator, would have had. That would be a great thing to take to Leo's welding or you know, somebody and say, hey, what do you think this would cost? If they say $2,500, then it doesn't meet the threshold, and that answers the question. Mm -hmm. If it's for $2,500. You know, if it's $5,000, then I, I would recommend we keep it in as a FEMA project. And get, and, Put it out to bed and get reimbursed. How long is the section going to be? Maybe 12 feet. It's going to be more than 25 feet. To go to Leo's and have them fabricate all those ballast things from the top and bottom rail? Yeah, it's yeah. basically, you know, top no, rails, quarter by two, bottom rails, quarter by two, there's three quarter inch solid steel balusters in between. I'm pretty sure they're galvanized, so that's going to add somewhat to the cost of I Steel. I'm throwing my vote behind you. You um, fix it, make it safe. Buy a can of green spray paint. No. And your call is not going to even sign your name. I agree I with like everything it. except for the spray paint. I like, <laughs> I like the macaroni. Yeah. Um, so I think that, like, I mean, the safety measures, it feels like that's a no brainer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, temporary, temporary safety measures is a no brainer. We'll keep it in for now. Uh, with the idea of replacing the section, it doesn't qualify when we get to that point. Sounds good enough. Got an answer uh, already. Nice reminder. Of if it doesn't qualify when it gets to that point, maybe we'll just replace it on. Maybe so we do the yeah. Maybe we do the yeah. It'll be under thirty eight hundred. I agree. We're already having problems with cash. Might as well spend more. I mean, I agree that the safety is like we have to just, we have to address the safety issue. Yeah. A kid could go through that right now. And it, right. there's no harm in having that section replacement on the FEMA list. There's no harm in that. Right. We don't have to do it. Right. When first comes to shop, we can say, close enough is good enough. So do you, does the village know that they can now get their skid steer through there? They do. I, communi I communicated that to Jason, who was going to communicate it to me. So, yeah. presumably. And then they uh, maybe don't know. I was going to ask if they had verified, but. I think we're all on the same page. Yeah. Where was that to fix that? Kyle? Um, thank you for bringing that up, Duncan. It is a really frightening spot that dog or kid could go through easily. Um, that bridge needs massive attention, just aesthetically. Um, we've been trying to do our best with the banners and the lights, but it needs the entire thing is rusted and needs to be repainted. And um, I'm curious if it's on who, who's responsible for the painting of the bridge. Is that state? Is that town? It's town bridge. It's a town bridge. And is that on any sort of No, it's not on the list. list. OK. A um, bridge inventory would be nice. I, I think it should be. It's the gateway to one of the most biggest assets, the rail trail that we have now. This is like what people first see when they come off the trail, I think it should be made a priority. You don't think um, rust color is in? It's ombre, it can, you know, be interesting, maybe, but now it just looks really shabby. Well, I can tell you that it is a, a historic bridge, and it was rebuilt under the Historic Bridge Program, and there are requirements <clears throat> under the Historic Bridge Program for 
like the color of the paint. So, I, so I green would work. Green might. Green might work because green is certainly a traditional color. Um, and it, it, that was done in the early 2000s. So it's been 20 years since it was since, painted. Since it's been painted. Okay. Uh, I saw Tom write it down. So. Uh, on a list now officially. Wonderful. It would be a great day off. It's fine. A great, great opportunity. I was thinking the rails might be too. Could be. Uh, okay. <clears throat> cool. So next up we have interlocal agreement for adding Berkshire. Berkshire is interested in joining. Um, and the last we saw St. George voted to include them. In the interest of trying to move things along so we get to the budget, I'm going to make a motion to uh, conceptually add Berkshire to the contract and amend the interlocal agreement to so reflect, which would have to come back to all four municipalities for signatures. Oh. In any case. Yeah, I support that. I'll second that. Uh, okay, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, let's have it. Did you want to add anything? Um, timeline, I guess, for the interlocal to be amended. Do you know what the term, how long do you be? Are they, uh, you said that the Berkshire board was going to take a vote on it at their 27th meeting or yes. something like that? Correct. Okay. Well, we'll have to get together and, you know, I imagine Ron and I were the ones that have done most of the work on the interlocal agreements. Um, so I, I, I would assume we'll have to get together. The one caveat that I would have with regard to this whole thing is, in which we talked to St. George about, we were in on that call in Hyde Park too. Um, Johnson wants to be able to recoup uh, costs for CTO time. Um, and then the other part that we haven't actually talked about, which I'd like Rosemary's input on, is whether or not there needs to be any change to the admin piece that we're collecting because at 24 hours a week it's going to trigger um, provision of Beamers, um, health insurance, dental insurance benefits, and whether or not we're currently collecting enough for the admin pick. You don't have to answer that right now, but um. yeah, we need to make sure that all of our costs are shared, which is complicated. Yeah. Is there going to be a percentage? Percentage is reached out for benefits. Yeah. Thirty-three yeah. percent Johnson and Hyde Park. Sixteen point six percent St. George and Berkshire. Yeah. That's going to take more time. Yeah, so, yeah. so we may have to adjust that. Is it, is it going to be enough? Quadruple it. Ish. She, she doesn't know yet. She needs to think about it. But her and Deck can figure that Deal. out. Deal. OK, cool. So I guess the short answer is we need to get the proposed in a local agreement modified. And I don't know if that's going to happen before their, it's not going to happen before their 27th meeting. But you can tell them. All, all of the boards have committed in concept to doing it, so it'd be a matter of amending the agreement and then getting it out to all the boards. Okay. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I will see you tomorrow night with a different hat. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Rail Cal Trail Committee appointments. So we've advertised, and these are the names that we've collected. Board and advertise longer or push these names to the rail trail for we should push them to the rail trail before we even see them we don't need to see them first oh, yeah. okay. so we should do that with all everything except the library trustees so, I mean, which is this is really wonderful i'm glad you said this because it doesn't match the policy can i make some suggested edits over what's the policy say it says the select board is supposed to uh, compile a group um uh Supply a list of applicants to the municipal volunteer group, and they'll be reviewed. So it sounds like it comes to the select well, board. Well, it's kind group. of the same thing. And I've, then, so it says the town or the select board in the first part? Select board. Oh. I've so been like, asked about this in previous occasions, us not being to the word with the policy. Yeah, can I make some 
fine tunes to this for another um, meeting in the far day. Make it fine tune and send it, put it on an agenda. Yep. Awesome, thank and you. Like June. Yeah, wait. Yeah, we, it doesn't need to be done. Budget right way before that. Yeah. Way before yeah. that. It just, it's confusing. It can go on the budget do. list. Oh, I love that. You so, know the budget list I'm talking about? The Excel sheet that no one wants using. So, <laughs> Tom, you're going to push uh, the three names for the Rail Trail Committee. The Rail Trail Committee asked for their uh, approval or appointment, recommended appointment. Yep. And then, uh, same with skate park, same with beautification. Correct. Okay, cool. Awesome, thank you. And the library trustees have recommended an appointment for their yes. vacancy. Yes, they have. Would you like to make a motion, Mark? I'd be glad to um, move that we accept Sabrina Rossi as a new library trustee. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I would like to look up the policy for the library trustees very specifically because I don't feel like they have to come to us. Uh, I don't think they have to come to us. They have one exception because they have their own governing body. It's not quite the same, I think. Huh. But, uh, but please check me on that. Yeah. They're statutory. Yeah, sure. Yeah, they're statutory. Right? They're statutory. Authority. Um, Town logo. So Adrian is here, and Adrian has supplied drawings. And these are all great, by the way, Adrian. Thanks. I'm finding it very difficult to pick a favorite. There's an extra one in the packet. Um, I printed out. Yeah. Um, no, she said there's an extra one. Oh, an extra one. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Thank you, Adrian. Sure. I know which I want. I want to vote for. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, again, these are just these are sketches. Like um, as graphic designers, we just kind of sketch do sketches first to uh, give us an idea of what a composition or layout could be. And um, it's just a way to get ideas out faster than going straight to digital. Um, and and digital would be crisper and yeah. So so whatever one you whatever two you choose, choose a one you like first, put a one by it, and then the second one you like, put a two by it. Um, but yeah, whatever two you choose, we would digitize and um, make them more vectory. Um, with the survey results, <clears throat> everyone liked the Cambridge logo the most, and the Middlebury one being second. Um, everyone agreed that Cupboard Bridge and Mountains should be represented the most in the logo. Um, and so we tried to do that with our sketches. Um, and yeah, and again with the sketches, like we didn't include color or anything that would distract us from just first seeing what the general layout should be. So if you want to put a one and a two by those, and if you have any additional Comments you want to make just right on the back of the packet. So, is, is our goal to try and pick one of these tonight? I think we should just vote for our one, two, three. I would actually suggest three because I think we should actually push out survey to residents. I, or maybe even put it in the town, on, town meeting day. So, that was my wildly crazy idea. It wasn't that crazy because I thought of it too. Oh, I think this is doubly crazy. I know. I think these sketches should just go before the voters at town meeting day. I say three. They can direct us. Think. Yeah, I think we narrow we narrow it down to three and then ask the voters. So this is probably really crazy too. Um, our existing logo is on there, but we absolutely committed to the fact that. We just don't like the existing model and don't want it. I know you are, but <laughs> I, I don't know that we've all made that. I've kind of decision. Let me let me go ahead and Can look at our logo again. Here. I don't, I don't That's the village. Are we, are we, we going to have? Village. Are we going to have enough? Yeah, I mean, if you can't brand, think of what it looks like in your head, then I not really can't. It's a good question. <laughs> well, part of the reason I ask is Jason just submitted a proposal today. For magnetic signs using the old logo. Yeah, Justin did. Yeah. Yeah. So if we're if we're going to do if we're going to change the logo, we should tell him not to order the magnetic signs using the old logo. Huh. 
You don't want to waste money. I actually can't even find it on the mobile version of our website. Look at so. look at his email today. Justin's email. It's right today. there. It's right there. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's not actually this one. It's not actually this one. It's one I my, my bottom line is, so I really don't want to spend an awful lot of time on this tonight because I'd rather spend more time on the budget. Um, okay, can we just vote quick or no? Oh, and Kyle made the suggestion we could reveal the new logo at town meeting. Eh? Yeah, I think waiting all the way to town meeting is really long. I mean, you could do something, you could push it out to the community digitally so it's a bit prior, and then at town meeting you can have a reveal, you know, oh, no, a reveal or a celebration around it, but waiting but until March. I just don't want to spend a lot of time sure. on it tonight. Okay. Um, One, two, three. That's what we're doing. So you're literally saying you don't want to spend time on that tonight, even though it's in front of us, and we're going to do it again another night and yeah. waste more time. Like, that's my concern with it. I think we're very selective about the things we want to spend time on sometimes. We and this talked is something that's early worth. on last month. We talked about trying to devote as much of this session as we could to budget, and we're not doing that. Okay, that's fine. Fine. Fine, and... If we want to submit our responses to Adrian directly, as she emailed all of us, just give her your information. And if your town of existing town of Johnson logo is one of your submissions, push that as one of your votes too. I'm just going to get this piece of paper. Okay, I'm going to get this paper too. Um, you can you email? Did you email us? I emailed Beth. Okay, so Beth to forward it to the board. And if we want to look at it more on our own, we can fill out the numbers and send it to you. Still going to talk about the rest of the process. Thank you. It was really fun to know. Yeah, thank you for doing this. No problem. I just wanted you to know that the one that looks like Scrooge your Bridge is my favorite. Never would have guessed. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Next up, we have Jubilee. the holiday jubilee. What do we need? I made an error, and it's not Boston Works is not doing it. It's, uh, it's Kyle Moose is spearheading this project as an individual. Sorry for the click on. Is that different than in the past? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Johnson Works did it. So Johnson Works is regrouping their in leadership transition, so they're not able to put on the Jubilee this year, or they decided not to put on the Jubilee. So um, I reached out to them and said, as an individual and business owner, would it be okay if I organized it? Came out of Jubilee retirement <laughs> and organized it, and they said, please do, go ahead. So I've been, and we have um, 13 different establishments that are participating, and everyone seems really excited about it, and we have a date, and we have, I've got pretty much everything organized. So I just coming to let you know that that's happening on December 9th. It's a Saturday. Historically, it's been on Friday evenings, but I'm doing it on a Saturday from 4 to 6. And... Um, I've gone, I've filled out a facility use form with the village for the village green and working on insurance stuff through them for the village green. Um, I don't think I need to do any insurance stuff through the town, but I couldn't quite remember if that had happened in the past. You're an individual and not in a town committee, so yeah. yeah. So the only thing I'm asking of the town is in the past, I know that um, Johnson Works has got 
some in-kind support for this, one of the things being printing posters um, and maps for the event. And I was hoping that that might be something that could be offered to me as well. So all the, all the basically print marketing for the event. Um, it would be a handful of, of you know, posters that would go up on bulletin boards around town. Um, and then, actually, Adrian and Blake are helping me um, to do that, to design that poster, but also to design a, a like a smaller piece of paper, a map that just <coughs> dots what businesses are participating so that people know the route. Um, so printing, what are they, half, will they be like half sheet? Um, that's the size. I, I think uh, eight and a half by eleven. Oh really? Uh, okay. We yeah, can try the ones in the We can try the ones. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, it would be um, that would be the bigger print because we would love to have a lot to hand out to people. Are you sure the town did that? I think that Johnson Works used their budget for that. I don't. Think. No. Um, I remember coming here. We've always. This is the first time I've heard of it. How much, how much money are we talking about? I'm not talking about money. I'm just talking. Well, I mean. It, it's it's your copies, right? copy. Yeah. Yeah, Rosemary, we've done that. I mean, at least what I was oh, presenting. Oh, for copies? Oh, just copies? Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh. Using your, your printer, basically. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. You're not talking about like print services. No. Right. No, 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 no. I see. Okay. I don't yeah, know. I'm okay with that. I'll say that she would be fifty copies. Yeah. They would be in color. I just want to. It's okay. At least not a color copier. Yeah. Okay. So that that would be really you want and not doing the eight and a half by eleven, but the smaller sizes would be lovely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we'll talk about that. We haven't actually <laughs> worked out that detail, but well, for the for the maps, we'll try to make that two fit in one. Yeah, yeah. As long as people can see it, it's dark. Right. They're going to be looking at this thing in the dark. Everybody has a flashlight. Literally, yeah. Flash, yeah. And there's all kinds of lights all around town. You see them. Yeah. And the other thing I just For those of us to... who are visually, visually disabled, don't get it too small. <laughs> the other thing I just want to let you know is that um, the, um, the Sheriff's Department is providing either one or two deputies to help people cross the street safely because that can get super dicey. Yeah. Um, so they'll, be, they'll have a presence for the cross route for the team. Thanks. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Island truck will be here. Not SD Ireland, but the second best thing, which maybe is the best thing because it's totally Johnson, is the fire department is going to oh, light up one of their trucks and lights and bring it into Talk to Tom Carney and see if I'm going to track her. I tried. Yeah, really? <laughs> Actually, I did think of that, Evan, but um, his tractor's and he can't get put in a garage. Don't put it on a trailer, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could light it up easier. Right? Okay. That's cool. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very yeah. much, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for, for the logo, should I wait on other people to email me their choices? If I okay. get an email? Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Unless number one is everybody's picked it except for Evan. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, just if you haven't heard back from people by the end of the month, let me know. Which is yeah, by the end of the month. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you, Avery. Okay, next up is reviewing a select board expense, town office expense, building and grounds expense, and just public safety expense. Can I run to the restroom? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you you walk to, even. Do you need permission? I think I might too. Uh, it's a big deal. Yeah. Um, if you look at the spreadsheet, um, so we have this year, the actual percent of budget. Um, there's a column at Y23, it's in print. At Y24, and you get projections from the next column, and the next Y25, this is the budget after. So it's all based on the pre uh, this year's uh, spending trends, last year's actuals, and then projecting based on what you know. Print. And this, um, this sheet right here that I'm looking at. Yes. Thank you. I'll still have one. 
Is this is this the sheet we're supposed to be looking at? Yeah. And this is twenty three budget, twenty three actual. But this doesn't give us any information about averages. Just last year. In the so field. there are budget status report attachments in a pile that each of you have somewhere. This right here. There's these three. These three. Budget status report for previous year. Budget status report for a five year period. Previous year, five year period. And then the sheet. So you go to select or that's the wrong one. What's the problem? I don't see the five year one. What were these? It's a bunch of steps for it, right? Previous year. Is it not averages? Is it five year or is it current year period five? Period five. five. I think. I think it says well, current year period five. So we got, you guys got two years. years in that grade of four. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, that's the same period that was on the. Yeah, that's, that's the same period that was on Rosemary's report. Oh, okay. maybe that's. Um, yeah, it must be a year to date. Oh, yeah. I think the period five one is just a year to date. This must be year to date, and this is last year. Last year? We got there. Well, this is five. I don't know. I think it is just year to date, because this is it's period five on the one Rosemary gave us as well. So nobody knows what these are that are in front of us. Just so you know. Okay, so she's speaking for me. Can I, can I ask a, a I'm really confused about how we're approaching the budget this year. Can somebody provide an overview of how to help and develop a budget this year? <clears throat> so I might ask the board if we could do smaller segments at once. So rather than a big a big uh, we looked at a spreadsheet a couple weeks ago, and to be honest, it was overwhelming, and we were kind of all over the place. It felt it felt like it was going to take a long time, and there was a lot of uh, conversations about lots of special meetings for the budget. And so then uh, I walked away from that, and I asked the board if we could do smaller segments, micro spreadsheets, I think is what I called it. Um, and so it's just focusing on smaller pieces at once and then walking away with like to-do lists. And so that way the next time we review it, we know that say 80% of it is done from that micro spreadsheet with a couple of questions and directives. Tom, do this, Tom, do that, look into this. And then you can make decisions based on those individual questions. But we're not looking at this big, massive chunk of data, right? And, then, and then the last time we did that, it was very, it felt like it was, all over the place and it was really hard for me to follow and it was really hard for me to understand uh, what the board was looking for and um, that's why I asked if we could try uh, this approach. This is something I've done uh, for the last 10 years with Pichu um, and it really it narrows things down quickly with directives and so that way everybody's kind of thinking about the same problems at the same time so you get better solutions at that next meeting. Um, and so. This is like the main meat of the meeting, if you will, of the budget. This is what the select board responsibilities are. I mean, ultimately, it's all the select board responsibilities. But um, if we could chunk out all this and then walk away with, say, 20 questions or, or less, then the next meeting we're only answering 20 questions, and that can go pretty quick. And a lot of that's going to be data driven and, and fast as well. Um, so. What I used, a lot of this is also the cost of doing business or pre-arranged contracts. 
That's why I used our current year budget status report, which is about 41% through the year at this time. And I used our previous year budget status report for actuals, where we ended last year. Um, and so I used our spending trends for this year and last year's actuals to make guesses, best guesses, is what, you know, on the fiscal year 24 end of year projections and then fiscal year 25, what uh, a good guess budget. So if you look at the spreadsheet that uh, to be fair, did not print cleanly. Uh, you have the account, the next column is budget, um, what is in our current year budget, and then the next column is our actuals, um, and then the percent of budget where we are. Um, there's an empty column, um, and that's fiscal year 23, so that was items where the end of year projection or fiscal year 25 did not match up. I put fiscal year 20, 23 final try to help provide the data. So wait, that's wait, stop. Last page you're talking about. No, uh, this is spreadsheet right here. So. So wait, so Mark, looking at the spreadsheet. Okay, yep. Fiscal year 24 budget, budget is this column here. It's just mm -hmm. off center. Actual is this column, percentage is this column. And then what is, there's a, there's a missing call. There's That's missing fiscal year 23 numbers, and I only included those numbers. That's actual spend? Or, uh, yeah, yeah, those are the actual. And I only included those actuals when um, there was a change to, uh, a need to review why we had to, to make a, a budget, to make a decision for hmm. fiscal year 25. Wait, Just, what? So what? this um, thing, yeah, I'm lost. All right. totally confused. But the thing that says actual, what year is that? This right now. It's this year. Right now. So that's and our budget current. is right now. Yep, and the percent of budget. So that's what percent we are of the current budget. Let's ignore that empty space because it seems like we're all hung up on that. And it, it's not that relevant for most of it. The next column over is fiscal year 24. Um, and that actually pushes out to the right. Um, I'm not sure why I printed that way. But... Um, so that 38.50 is fiscal year 24 um, year, end year end projection. And then the next one is the last is the fiscal year 25, what we should budget. That's proposed. Sorry, is that supposed to be 38.50 or 3580? Oh, sorry, 3580. This actually is a So the column that's kind of all squished together, FY24 year end projections. That's your best guess of what we're actually going to spend? Correct. Correct. Um, and that's based on contracts, that's based on new information, and based on spending trends. And when you say spending trends, are you looking at one of the things about the spreadsheet, confusing as it is, it's got five or more years of data yeah, that you can yeah. average out? Spending trends within the year. Um, and so, one of the things that I think I wanted to focus on is when you look at five years of data, it's really helpful when you get to those 20 questions, right? That's where you pull that spreadsheet out and make that good decision. But looking at five years of data for town reports, we just signed a contract for 30, 3580, so we know exactly what that is. Like the rest of that is not quite useful. So I think we run through and we make best guesses, and then where there's a question, that's when you bring in the five years of data to support that question and answer. My question is, what stands out to you? In so, this? Because I don't want, I don't particularly care to dig into every single one. Of those. Yeah, so everything that wasn't well supported, I have a question for Rosemary, so that's like, you know, when we talk about the reappraisal fund, it's 13000 uh, the previous year. Um, and, and I don't know what that is. So I, before I put a number there, I wanted to have a conversation with Rosemary to say, hey, can you help me fill this in? Um, or, and then I can report back to the board what that meant. Right? And then as you move down through um, Development Review Board, we've spent... Let's take them one at a time. Sure, sure. We'll do it. What, is there any one that you want to drill in on, Duncan? Well, that, I, I'm, when I say one at a time, I mean the ones that you've got questions on. Okay, thank oh, you. Oh, yeah. So one is the reappraisal fund. I just don't know enough to put an answer in there. So I need time to meet with Rosemary to help make a suggestion for you guys. And um, 
Has it been 13,000 for years and years and years, Rosemary? Last year, the year before, is $37,405. Yeah. yeah. That's why we can this question. Yeah. But that's why it's a question. Yeah. You know, like, sorry, Rosemary, you said that, why was it that it was so, um, so much of a difference in previous years? You took some cash on hand and put it in the Okay. Right. Which we may still want to do. Right. Okay. Assuming I, we have cash on hand. Yeah. Assuming we, <laughs> yeah. So isn't that what we did break down with percentages last year? Mm -hmm. So that was with unexpended funds at the end? Yeah. Got it. So I think... I mean, how's that fund looking, Rosemary? That's how this kind of seems to have gone for the last couple of years. You just kind of say, what's, do we know the balance of the account? Well, you've got that, but that doesn't include, that doesn't include what we were going to put in this year, does it? No. No. So we will have, was it 37,000 or so that we were going to put in? Oh, no, that's included in that one. We were down to 7,000. We were? Yeah. So the 41, so if this is correct, we, we currently have $40,143 in the reappraisal fund, which is nowhere enough to, nowhere near enough to do a reappraisal. Yeah, so you know what the fund is for, right? It's for... It's just to pay for a town wide reappraisal. Correct. Yes. And so, but the reason why I put Rosemary there is because one year has a budget of 37000 the next year has a budget of 13000 I knew there was a reason. I didn't know what that was, so for me, I'm not going to put a number in where I don't feel comfortable putting a number. And so that's one of those questions that we should probably talk to Justin and say, hey, Justin, where are we? What's our COD? What's our CLA? Have we been flagged for a reappraisal yet? We'll be getting those numbers in December. Yeah, so, so we should probably hold off on that until we know. That's a good one. Uh, we might not want to put a number in yet. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and circle that for that reason. So we'll get the CLA in December? It's usually December or early January. Um, where is the reappraisal? What's your sign? It's going to go down. I'm looking at this sheet here. Yes. Um, that that is a sales yeah. This sheet goes right I'm looking at last year's calendar. What is it? What is this is last year's calendar. I understand. You know, where is it? Yeah. When people complain to me about the price of property in Vermont, I say just go across the lake because your house is going down in value in New York. All upstate this New York. Is the From upstate New York all the way to Montana. What's the Really? Well, it's in, it's, it has its own separate. Green price is kind of out of control. Yeah, it's separate. Yeah, the cash. Show up in cash. There's, I don't think there's no businesses no. in Pennsylvania, Not one upstate New York, and Iowa. They're dying. Shouldn't it? Tom, Tom, so I'm looking at the uh, Racial Justice Committee's line. Yeah. So is that because they were on a hiatus? I'm not sure whether... Um, exactly. And so this yeah. year they spent... So I mean, they've been eight months without a meeting. It doesn't feel like there's a committee there. Um, Have you spoken with um, either Jeff Bickford or uh, Sophia? Um, I, sorry, I'm blanking on my last name, Berard. I haven't. No, I spoke to uh, Kyle News <coughs> today. Didn't they um, say they would reach out when they were reorganized? And so it's, yeah. it seems like, and so I, I, we haven't expended anything yet this year. They had a pretty significant yeah. line Thank in the you. budget. And so I, I, I just put zero. I was under the impression that maybe they would take it out for them. But I guess there needs to be a commitment from them. Yeah. Um, I'll reach out to them and see if that's something that they are interested in taking up again. And so end of year actuals. And do your projection mm -hmm. oh, for you. Yeah. For the reappraisal fund. Yeah. So So um, we were also proposing, so we budgeted I know I'm stuck on that one line. We budgeted thirteen thousand dollars last year and we proposed to the voters who approved the budget putting forty thousand dollars of the previous year's cash on hand on top of it. So this is where it gets confusing because we ask about a balance. No. I believe a previous select board member said that last time a reappraisal was done it cost like just south of 200000 It wasn't that much. Do you remember what it was, Rose, right? Maybe they were blowing smoke. Maybe you didn't remember. It cost that much because of the rule on reappraisal. We did it over five years. 
How much does it cost over five years? So a hundred thousand. Around twenty five or thirty, mm -hmm. the number of total services, mm -hmm. yeah. and that included maintenance of the green list and doing the wrong, wrong way of putting it. Hmm. But mm -hmm. before that, Ted Nelson did it, right? The, the mm -hmm. last mm -hmm. full blown town library appraisal we had. Wasn't that a statistical? Wasn't a full blown one. Those things? So, I, I thought Nelson did do a full blown appraisal. Is that a statistical? Thing for me is I don't know what it will cost and exactly when the town will be facing it. But I would like the town well positioned at that point. And if the cash on hand from last year goes in the way that the <coughs> voters approved it, then we'll have close to eighty thousand. Well, you have forty-seven mm -hmm. plus, plus 40, forty plus thirteen. You have ninety-five thousand. Mm -hmm. Ish. So oh. you're proposing another 13? Wow. <laughs> but well, it's what so I can tell you is that the legislature yeah. did take some actions last year, and you should check in and see exactly what that is. Um, they, I believe, they did away with the the mandatory reappraisal based on the COD yeah. and CLA. Um, but I don't remember exactly everything that they did. That would inform our discussion. Yeah, I so. think that, that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. that, I'm not sure. I, I don't. I don't. I think they removed the triggers, right, or put a whole moratorium on them for for the CLA and the, and the COP. Mm -hmm. But um, and I think they went to. I want to say nine years. It was every X number of years, is that correct? Yeah, they just extended the number of years. I think it was a nine, every nine years. Well, oh, when the specific rules, I'll, I'll find out and let you know. And then I can find out that date from the, our last reappraisal and then give us a projected amount that we need to have so therefore we can budget between X and Y. That's a really good. Do you know when the last reappraisal was? Last year, that might come on this territory. Well, it's the year before that. Just didn't Emmerich stay on one year? Years ago, yeah. Robin still worked for the town when I was on the board. Mm -hmm. She was a member of the board. But that was a great appraisal. Mm -hmm. Well, they did. They came out with a. With a I've got it. In, yeah, they came out with a full. Okay, we're gonna look into it, it doesn't matter. But it was like the year after that that Robin left, that's what I'm saying. So right now, the Development Re Review Board has zero dollars, it has had. I think that should have some money in it. Give it a 500. Perfect. Okay. Uh, street lights, I don't see the point in reducing that expense. It's just the last two years we haven't spent that now. I don't feel like we're putting lights on longer. Or... Previous to that, we well, spent nineteen hundred and ninety dollars. The village is looking to elect up the electric costs, and now we're paying an extra hundred dollars for the bridge, the bridge. on School Street. Yeah, so twelve hundred bucks a year. No, it's not nineteen hundred bucks a month. Hundred bucks a month. Yeah. No, it's hundred a year. I thought it was a year. It was a year. Was it okay. a year? Yeah, we're paying okay. fifty dollars for the this. For the second half of our budget year, and then in our new budget year, it's a hundred dollars. Okay. Yeah. It's, okay. Thank it's you. A lot for one bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Two thousand. Uh, I. People can disagree with me. I, no, I'm gonna, I'm done that. disagreeing with you. So pick my disagreements. That's fine. Um, so you're proposing so, fifteen hundred instead of two thousand. But then uh, Evan just suggested bringing it back up to two thousand with the electric rate increase and the uh, new light set to street. So that's where it would be nice to have the five year be able to look at all of that long. So how come time. I don't understand what's going on? Oh. So okay. Uh, I'll put a question there. And then Please don't move on. We have two lines here. One is called East Johnson Sewer Electric. Which is that should be no longer. Oh, that's a little bit. Okay. 
Uh, legal expenses. Do we foresee meeting? So that was an interesting one where uh, two years ago we spent twenty-four thousand five hundred. Two years ago was the ratification of the union contract. There was a lot of legal expenses there. Okay, and then this year we've spent two fiscal years ago. We've spent almost nothing this year. Really? Huh? Yeah, there was another one. Oh, with yeah. The South Sea River. Yeah, there was a couple of issues that year. So I we could support it going to fifteen thousand, but I wouldn't want to go any less than that. Perfect. Wait, you're wait, 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 wait. You're bumping it up. It's eighteen, it's 18 now. Currently. It's eighteen now. Tom bumped it down to ten. We're oh. talking about bringing the proposal. Let's go. Let's see, I drew lines. Let's make our axes. Okay. You know, and then whatever comes out of this meeting, I'm going to recompile and send it back to you. So it's just like a think of it like a work session where you run it all together, you run your numbers, you see a difference, and then you're going to look at it again, and then you're going to know we need to change it by X to get to Y, right? So it's like I'm updating my I'm updating my sheet. X Y. But yeah. Um, so I have a question so, as to yeah, what I'm listening. You got five um, different systems. Tom, what's the basis of, of, of a year and expense of 10000 under legal? What was the basis? Uh, just that this year we've spent only $140, and the previous year we spent That's 20. not right. That's not right. No way. Can't, can't possibly be right. I can only say what's on the. We just spent $140 last week. On the budget status report. So I, that's where that came from. Um, so. Yeah, it does say it on the. Uh, I've been called the lawyer since the blood. Yeah, or our Four. Four. We just came right up the agreement with the town just now. That cost more than $140. Yeah, with the town. I'm with the village. village. With the village, yeah. Well, and you, before what? that. Oh, yeah, we probably haven't been invoiced for that. I'm so, um, are you getting month. any email invoices from Stitchell Page? I don't know. But, um, I, th I think to Duncan's point, we can just put 15000 on it and just monitor it. You know, we have another month. We'll know a big chunk of this is going to be solved pretty shortly, right? I'll tell you what my theory is. Um, anything says it is um, for year-end expense budget put in what's in the budget because then we know that's the most conservative possible thing to do. Yep. If we under budget and then we end up with less at the year end than we are showing in the total budget, that's not a good place to be in. Yeah. That's that's my theory. Um, others, others may have yeah. a different I'll, um, I'll, re I'll re reorganize this for that. I, yai, yai, yai. What is your view, sorry? My view is that any, for year-end expense, there will be some cases where the year-end expense actually exceeds the current expense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Projection, situations more, projection we, you mean, is more than actual from end of year last year. Or the actual or the is actual more than the budget, budget for the current uh, year. I see, yeah, yeah. Okay, so my, my theory on developing a budget in terms of the projecting the year-end expenses is to simply go with a budgeted number unless the actual expense is higher than the budgeted number because that gives us the well maximum. or if you know that the, the projection is higher than the budgeted number or if you know that the projection yeah. will be higher than the budgeted number yeah. yeah i agree and in the past every board's different tom but in the past when doing budgets Eric Osgood always put it this way. The board tended to be a little bit conservative on income, a little bit liberal on expense, and it always seemed to work out for the taxpayers. I think you'll you might see a lot of that. Like we don't want to drop the expense that much. Because we really don't know. I mean, the two previous years for legal expense were over twenty grand. I'm comfortable with fifteen. I'd like to think we could do it for 15. And I, you know, I think we dropped. This would be where it'd be nice to be able to see the history because I think we dropped. To, I think we were budgeting 20 before we dropped it to 18 last year. Yeah, we did 20 
the previous year, and we dropped it by 2000 yeah. for this year. Did we not spend the full 20 previously? Well, we budgeted 20 and we spent 24500 but there was two significant items that right. year that incurred a lot of legal expense. And, you know, sometimes not getting a legal opinion costs you more money than actually getting a legal opinion. So, yeah. um, I, you know, legal expenses are one that I hate to spend the money, but on the other hand, sometimes it saves us money. I agree, and we've had legal, we've had more, like our legal expenses are not right, I'm sure of it. It can't be. We've had more. Can't be 140 that. bucks. I'm no, not, it I can't mean, be. maybe that's what showing up. We've hired two but. employees, plus the other things that we've done, whether they're confidential or not. Yeah. Well, just the just the, the memo that we had Bob Sutcher working on for the. Yeah. You know that that had to. You know their error the oh, rates over 200 bucks an hour. Yeah. <laughs> so. I said, I'm just said that. I think we beat this one. Thank you. Well, do we want to stay at the 18 or do we want to try and drop it to 50? Keep the 18 for now and look at it later. Or look at the full budget. That sounds like a good point. Okay, next that. up is the consultant zero. The select board consultant services. I have zero. I don't know what to put in there. But is that LCPC ever? Or will it be? Which one do you want? Uh, the next one. Select board consultant. Select board consultant? Yeah. I don't know what that is. Is that LCPC? It must be LCPC and I think we LCPC. used to we used to just run a certain amount of money in that category. Just in case. Just in case. We never never a lot of times we didn't specifically. Well we spent know. it last year, current year. We spent money in there current year. I think it's all CPC services that we used this year for. The 3541? Uh, yeah, the 3451? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does Ryan fall under consultant? That's under Ford. Yeah, because he should be reimbursable. I'm, I think we should keep it. I'm actually fine with bringing that to 10. 10 is good. Yeah, I'm sorry, 10. Okay, uh, this is P commission, is that commission? Oh, I think we're I don't think we use that one. I think we're at accessors contracted services. Okay, well, that's because you're not looking at the version I'm looking at. Well, yes, I am. But, so did you zero out planning commission consultant services, Tom? Um, I didn't. I just... I was didn't it, need anything for the was it, plan. Yeah, was that reordered? Because it has been zero for. Because this was just pulled. Yeah, it's been um, zero about since five years, six 2020 years. was the last time we had to spend in there. We really need Where? to talk with them because they're the municipal plan. Oh, sorry, the next one. They are. They're working Sometimes on that on December 9th, I believe. Yeah, December. so I, I mean, maybe talk to Paul, but could we just pencil in um, um, 2000 for that, even though it's not on the sheet? It is on the sheet. Probably should. I don't think it should be zero. I think it yeah. needs to be in there somewhere. For me, I don't have zero. So there's also a planning commission contracted a few lines down. Yeah, that's an issue. So there was projects, planning commission projects. I put that at a thousand and then two thousand for planning commission expense. I think you they put something they didn't take it, but they don't pay you well, Paul did ask for us to put money in because of the plan, though, last year, maybe? I don't feel like it was this year. I think it was last year. See, with the... Okay. With the number of printout... Yeah. I, if there's zero in it, it doesn't show. For some reason, this is the CSV file of, like, I didn't change anything. It's just a NEMREC CSV file, and it doesn't have that in there. But it's because it's because there's zero dollars in it. Yeah. It has been for several years, I think. I, so I think, I think we get rid of 57, 10, 44, 0, 1. 
So 50-7-10-44-01. That one's the one that's just been empty for a long time. We're not going to use it. So that's already not on this one. It's already not on this one. Yes. And, but there are... There are more planning commissions when we're talking about planning, planning commission. All of them at the same time. There is planning commission expense, just expense, which is higher up on the list. It's the third, third from the bottom. There's consultant too. Second from the bottom. There is the consultant we're striking out. Or is that contracted. Someone? Yeah. There's contracted. Okay. Yeah, there's consultant, and then four down from that is the contracted, and then three down from that is projects and something. And the only one that has had anything on it in recent years, from the looks of things anyway, it is the prop, both the projects, the last one, and the first one, which is the planning commission extension. You know, I don't know how active they have been, but I, in the past, they have gotten some planning grants. And I think that's where those expenses have gone. Again, this is where it would be nice to be able to look at more than one year's data. Um, so that it, may be, it may be showing zero expense for a few years, but it's probably only because they, A, haven't had to update their town plan or we haven't applied for municipal planning grants. So I think we need to, I think you need to talk with Paul and find out whether or not any of these what they've got going on and then we can figure out which ones to and that's really when we, when we hit those ones that we don't have a quick answer, I could would you guys mind just like giving me a directive, tell them talk to Paul, come back to us and then I, and I, then we can like move through a little quicker and I'm happy to do the legwork in the middle of the two weeks. But there's a lot that I don't know from not being here. And so giving me those two weeks to follow your direction will, will help a lot, um, rather than hashing it out right now. Gotcha. Uh, Some of it is we have to figure out yeah. what is this fund, what is this fund, you know, what has it been used for? In the like I think the Planning Commission expense from the previous year, I want to say that was for the, like, at least a lot of that was for the, the survey that was mailed out. Um, in relation to the uh, town plan, I think you're right. Um, so I, you know, just figuring out where this money is being spent is kind of what we're doing right now. Thanks. So one of the one of the, one of the issues with doing this printout again, I'm pretty sure that if when you do this kind of printout, if there's been zero activity for a couple of years, it's it doesn't show that line at all. So on the one hand, you've got the actual chart of accounts that shows zero in it, and your spreadsheet is actually yeah. missing that. Yeah, and I when I found that, that's why I printed the, these as like backup data, so we can run through. I guess in my in my mind tonight, we were not going to hash out as much as we're doing. I was imagining running through and eliminating. Uh, 85 to 90 percent of it, and then coming back. I could have told you that was going to happen. Well, like if if we want to focus on high level things, um, the assessor's contracted services. We have a, a note in there about the spreadsheet. So yeah, it does have to be updated. Can we talk? Can we ask um, Tom to <clears throat> talk with Paul and find out if they yeah. have any expenses? Or? Fully supportive of that. Yeah, and then talk to Paul come back to us with what he's projecting. Community grant match, I think we're okay with leaving that at zero. Sorry, what did you just ask me for? You didn't ask, you said you were gonna ask the question, then you didn't, what, did, what was the point? You're talking to me? Yep. You, the assessor contracted? <clears throat> yeah, the assessor contracted services, he has a note about the spreadsheet, so right. that number. It's gonna be like, driven project. by the new agreement. Yeah. Right. But there's not, a, if I remember correctly, there's not a lot of difference between the budget and the amount. Yeah. No. So I, just, I think I would leave it at 25. I think we need to budget more. Yeah, um, this I'm, isn't, this also, isn't this going to fall into our salary and benefits cost? No, it's separate. 
But the benefits will fall. No, it'll, it's all kept in this line, right? I think no. that's, that's going to be up to Rosemary, probably, how she runs it. Well, point being, I think we, we need to... You may want to change it back to move in that category to the payroll category. I don't... Instead of having it in the set work expenses, because he's an actual employee. There's just already so much that is buried in those three lines, right? Well, we could have we're talking about burying it out. Okay, I'm with Evan. I, I'm with both Evan and Rosemary. I think the salary needs to be in the salary section, not in the select board expenses, definitely. And I also think that we need to break out the specialized people that we have as employees as their own line. We need to have rec coordinator there. I have no idea how many hours we get billed for rec coordinator, none. I think we need to have the assessor there. Um, CEDC. There's somebody else. Oh yeah, yeah. Randall there. The skate park has two town employees. I didn't yeah, even know Yeah, anyone that's like, Right. Anyone that's not a... It's an office expense. Maybe it's anyone who's not full-time. Maybe it's what it is. Like the roles that aren't full-time roles. I don't know. Exactly. Point it's being... the category for all of them. If we were to show the taxpayers what we were paying for an assessor, even though it's listed as accessor contracted services, it's actually assessor employee cost we need to budget twenty seven thousand two hundred dollars not twenty five is that what the spreadsheet comes out of um with, with, with the benefits <coughs> that's the projection for Hyde Park I don't know why ours is less than Hyde Park oh because time. we don't we don't have we to don't, pay, we don't pay, pay ourselves we have to well shouldn't we no no, because we're already paying us money to do it. Right? Yeah, <laughs> we're just billing it out. And, and that, that also, I, I, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that I said to you that we should account for Johnson for CPL time, but in reality, aren't we already? We're budgeting a certain number of hours for him, whether he's physically there or not. Okay, we've hit our budget under salary. Yes. Should they be paying it? But they should be paying it. They should be paying the CTO time. The CTO time. Yeah. They, they should be. But oh, I'm, should what be I'm saying is, in the yeah. spreadsheet, is showing John, uh, Johnson as contributing. We're already, we're already paying for it. Right? Yeah. 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 Initially, yeah. I had Johnson out, and then yeah. I hashed it out, and then I put it in, and now yeah. I probably take it out again. Yeah. Well, I'm, but yeah. I'm. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know what the right answer is. I'm throwing it out there. You can, you can deal with that. You can figure <laughs> it out. Because I've been, we've been billing for CTO time. Yeah. So long and skinny. If you don't want to carry the twenty-seven thousand two hundred, you need to carry twenty-six thousand. The thing is that filling them for CTO time while he's here is very different than if somebody would ever leave and they have to get paid out. I'm sure you would still fill his part, but beautiful. You I mean, it's easier to have the bird in the hand than the bird in the bush. Yes. Yeah, yeah bird. <laughs> So the tax. The park is one, but Tom's My only question is whether we should be budgeting for that because it seems to me that if that if he's working twelve hundred forty eight hours a, a year for us, that's already built into our number. Yeah. The CPO word. Or four hundred and sixteen. Four hundred and sixteen hours a year. Yeah, whatever it is. So what's the question at tax maps and related, Tom? Oh, uh, I talked to Franco at CAI. Okay. And just say, making sure that our quarterly plus the actual tax map is that. Um, okay. Rosemary and I spoke earlier. It sounds like it looks slow. So before I put a new number in, I want to make it the actual. What looks well, slow? What we have is 4,000. Tax maps and related. So is Tom, to try and be clear for Tom, is Tom going to take the contracted assessor contracted services and basically transfer those monies into a line item, a new line item for salary and increase the benefits. 
I think Rosemary needs to inform where they go, and then Tom can make the changes. So, does that work? There used to be a district category in the payroll section. Right. Can just change the header. And if we could add those other positions also into that, that would be really good. So that's RAC, Lester. Currently, RAC is in town officer. The general category yeah, of town officers. Category. You guys had that discussion last, last year. year. Uh huh. What do you mean town officer? You mean town office salaries? Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, one of those ones I was talking about. That's yeah. Very. I think our discussion last year was whether we should show it as part of the rent budget or part of the town budget. Yeah. And I think the decision was to keep it in the town budget, not put it in the rent budget. But I think Beth's point is have it broken out as a separate line item as salary. Is that? I think you had some comments about whether it's difficult to treat it that way or not. Well, we already have a line under salaries and benefits for recreation salaries, but we don't have anything populated there. Did it make your payroll more difficult? Is that what it was? What did you get to say that? It doesn't change. Um, it's already there. It's just not, it doesn't have anything in it. Yeah, I think rec expenses should be shown in the rec budget. No, not in the rec budget. It's the salary. So rec expense is under rec salary. In the recreation section. We, we have On the recreation section line last year. in the salary and benefits <laughs> section. Yeah. I agree with you. Somebody wanted to put it in the recreation budget. Yeah. And some of you did not. Yeah. You're right. But, yeah, but you're right, Rosemary. What did I? <laughs> Um, and that's wrong. That's all that matters. General insurance, something that we've talked about for a couple of years on that. If you could talk about the LCT and Duncan, th this is building insurance, right? Mm -hmm. Duncan had said last year that the LCT has a couple different ways that they do building insurance. And we'll, could you explain that again? Yeah. What line are we looking at? Uh, general insurance. General insurance. Okay. What line are you looking at? Uh, what number? 50-7-10-48.00. Okay. In, yeah, as I'm, as I'm sure you're aware, Tom, there's several different classifications. There's agreed upon value. There's um, Cost replacement of value. value. There's, you know, there's three or four different. Um, I think it would just be really... My own personal opinion is that we want to, especially just looking at what we went through the flood, we want to make sure that we're not underinsured on anything because that would ultimately hurt us. But there are different values, you know, for that. I, I think last year I tried to get Brian to bring that information back to the board and I don't think they ever made it to the No. And two years ago we had talked about how high they have. The whole amount the raised for. Yes. And the extra expensive cost of insurance for that building, and maybe if something were to happen, maybe that's not the need to have the same exact square footage, but yeah. there could be. I think they had it appraised for like 900 something thousand dollars a couple of years ago, and maybe the historic site doesn't need that same. Configuration. Maybe they need a half a million dollars. They probably wouldn't build that building back the way it is right now. So that's part of the conversation. Are we overpaying on insurance on something like that? Um, do we carry the insurance for the mill house? Or does the village? We're paying 50% of it. We're, we're paying 50% of it, but <clears throat> I get that it's a joint property, but maybe that doesn't need to be insured for how much it's insured for. Maybe I'll bring, I'll pull our policy with the values and uh, and we can hash it out and I'll also figure out what what changes we can make, you know, or you guys can make, and what you can't make. They've, I'm sure they have some limitations on what you can and can't do and what the implications are, but they might only pay 80% of that value. So if you drop it down so low, that might be underinsured. Or if you're too high, we are paying too much, but let's figure out, we, I think, with the data, you can actually make this decision. So that's just a follow-up one. I think that's what you're looking for, generally. 
So I love planning commission. That's one that we already talked about. Beautification uh, is level funded. And I think that's what we were asking. Shoot for. That's one you're going to follow up on um, with as a committee expense. Yeah. Projects, events, and celebration. Oh, I put uh, that's a um, seven fifty. Yeah, that could yeah. be used for. I was thinking about our, yeah, like trying to build camaraderie between town and village on like a quarterly basis. Yeah, I think that's a good use for that money. Hasn't been used this year. So I think is that a in years past has been asked for. I know the jubilee. I think got some of that money a few years ago, but. Was Green Oak Day given? I don't know what that is. Or what is? What are you talking about? Projects, Projects events, and celebrations. Line yeah. 10, 50, 65, 2. Or roll 160. When we have joint dinners with the trustees. Isn't that yeah, cool? that's what Tom's suggestion was. <laughs> I think that's a good, <clears throat> good suggestion. I agree. I, I don't think it was, it wasn't joint dinners with the trustees, it was uh, joint joint lunches for all town employees, right? yeah. town and village employees. Yeah. So, do you think $750 is an okay expense for that? I think it might, even, we'll probably spend less than that. But yeah. Yeah. Let's shoot for less, but we'll keep it at $750. Yeah. Uh, the car charging station. Let's see if the village Why do you have the village question mark there? Ah, uh, because I think it's my understanding, and I don't know that it's true, but I think it might be damaged now. And we're finally going to push that thing over the bank? What? I don't know. What the question is, has anybody used it since the flood? I, I mean, I could let go of that and see what happens. I'm trying to remember but what it People was. used it right before the flood. That I know. But what if, you know, here's, we're having this idea, right, of like trying to get all the people from the rail trail to Johnson, but we can work on that and say the municipal lot, right behind the coffee shop, right next to the Mason's Lodge, right next to the city center, had the electric charger there. Then people drive to Johnson to start their rail trail ride. So kind of like the same idea, right? But then they're here, they're having lunch, they go ride for four hours while their car's charging, and then they're back in town to spend money for dinner. And so I don't know that people want to hang out in the municipal building, but maybe if we could get them to hang out downtown if that charger was downtown. And here's an opportunity to do it, because if it's broke, now's the time to move it. If it's not broke, we probably should move it. But that's why I put village question mark, like should we relocate that somewhere where we might draw some traffic in? Is that that's our charger? We own that charger. Thing. The town owns the charger. Yeah. It had it to had be out. on municipal property. 25%. Yeah. And so don't we own the bot where the old firehouse was? The village does. The village owns it. No. 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 Maybe they don't anymore. I don't, I don't think they, 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 they do. Just before the post no, 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 no. The studio center owns it. Yeah. They own that parking lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyways, that was... That's why there was a question mark there, like, here's a window where if we have to replace it and there's FEMA money to replace it, maybe we could use that somewhere else that's more viable to, like, drawing commerce to the village. I thought about the Village Green, yeah, the Village Green has been something, and in the past they've had food trucks there as well, so it kind of makes sense as something to put more of that okay, infrastructure. Okay, but this is, like, that. Obviously not... that is a village decision, so. Yeah. And we're off track. We are. Well, like, the reason why, I'll follow up, the reason was... If you wanted to move it, we have to budget for it. And so, hence. I'm not in favor of budgeting for moving it. Yeah. No. Okay. We could give it away. If we got a grant to fund moving it or something like that, cool. It's a very small grant to fund the move. Yeah. We yeah. may also have to look at the, the existing grant to see if there's a commitment for having, having to have it there for X number of years. Yeah. Could be. I don't know. You give me shivers when I say that. So we'll budget five hundred dollars. No, Brian was when the grant was done. So. When they signed the grant agreement, Brian was. What does the five hundred dollars go for year after year? Like we only paid eighty six dollars and then well that hundred. That's for the telephone bill, which the village pays for, and there's more charges at the time it's not reimbursed the village for that. Which one are we on? Uh, let's see. Wood fired oven, 
They're usually level funded. Yeah. Well, they went up from 24 to 27. We um, changed their budget last year so that their revenue was properly reporting and their expense was reporting. And so they're just a gas and cash out thing. It's yeah. an in and out. Yeah. It's an in and out. Whatever they raise, they spend. Sometimes they spend all of it sometimes. So they only spend 800 this year and leave it at 27. Well, the thing is, the they'll, year before they'll they have spent more events 2400. in June, won't they? Right. They'll be an offsetting revenue. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's offsetting yeah. revenue. It doesn't matter what it does affect yeah. the budget. They have expenses right. at town meeting. Mm -hmm. They have a couple three bakes in the winter time. Yeah, for the skates. The yeah. Keep it at twenty seven. But I would we'll again. I would do the year end expense at twenty seven as well. I would do that for everything. But yeah, that, I'm, I was planning yeah. on. I on my list. What is bike train? Like we spent. $12,000? You, you jumped ahead. No idea. Didn't you? In 2019? No, I did not jump ahead. Well, I'm not... Okay. You're wrong. And in 2019, we spent $12,000 on bike train? Must be the bike path. Uh, I don't know the skate park. Uh, skate park. Uh, Probably through a grant. Well, grant. It did, in full fairness, it did... Um, it eliminated some categories, like Duncan was talking about earlier. So bike train was eliminated, tax adjustment prior year, and tax abatement. It didn't pull in, and I thought that was interesting. Um, Did it pull non-motorized path grant? No, probably not. That's old. Really That's old. old. Okay. But I can we remove the really old ones? That are so the, the tax years. abatements we cannot move. Yeah. Well, it's and so. The tax abatement, is that like expense on the meetings? No, actual abatement. Tax. How much you abate? Oh, and that's how you budget. That's how you show it. It's because you've already raised the money and you show it by as an So we're going to budget a pile. So we will show year. something there. Anybody want to throw like 50 grand at this line? And so that's not Very for next year, for 25. That's this year. And <laughs> yeah, be that's projected. That'll be, a, money. that'll be a projected year on next month. Can we budget for it next year? All right. We never do budget for it. What all do we don't know? We may, we may not have any. We know there's some coming. But what will it be next year? Next year. I have it on my list. I'll pull up the properties. Do we think there's a possibility of there and just year. total it up, worst case scenario? Yeah. It won't. There's always a possibility. Just use the logic that we're already using. It's like, just like the tax adjustment. So we don't. It's a lot to an X whether that's going to happen or not. I mean, on tax abatements, historically, over the last three years, you could average it out and say that you're pretty much sure we're going to spend at least $6,500. Oh, yeah. And that's and just quick. That's quick. No, we don't just. Spend, no. Tax abatement. Yeah. No. Tax abatement expense. No. 2020, 2021, seven thousand seventy-two dollars. 2021, 2022, eight thousand nine hundred thirty-two dollars. Next year, three thousand five hundred ninety-one dollars. Am I wrong? Yes. Why? Are Did you send me the wrong that, sheet? Is there tax sales that they go out and accompany those? Then we get revenue in. We have no. I didn't send the wrong sheet. Is that how they line up on yours? I don't know. I'm like, talking. We did have my bazaar was a big tax abatement. Yeah. yeah. And the year before that, there and was. That was a, spread out over a couple of years, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. or was it? Was the year before there? that, there was a couple, right? That were long standing ones that were on landed mobile homes that never left the park. Mm -hmm. And there's a good chance That's to true. run into that again this year. I think we ran into this last year, didn't we? We did, yeah. Yeah. And that might be where the 30. Do we want to budget for it? Yeah, we want to budget History for it. History says that we're going to spend some money. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's we'll we'll get you an average. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I was talking small numbers, Rosemary. <laughs> oh, a thousand? Don't say 10,000. Well, I, I just wrote 10,000. That, that's going to be projected year. I think it's for projected year. Well, yeah. So the average is 47, almost 4,800. So I want to take the average. How many years did you do? One, two, three, four. four, five. Yeah, see, that's We're going the wrong direction here, folks. <laughs> In terms of 
So over a, <laughs> over a five year period, you're saying we average 4,700, so we budget 5,000. I'm saying let's budget 4,800, the average. It, it rounds up to 4,800. All right. Thoughts? I mean, you know there's going to be an expense. Yeah. My, my thought is that we've always, if we budget, we've always ended up with surplus and we've been able to cover those kinds of expenses. So, um, we, uh, we certainly have, but we'll be at a much lower surplus this year than previous years. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, let alone just the fifth employee at the highway department. That's going to cut surplus by 8,000. No flood in it. So 40 okay, tax sales. So these are costs for tax sales. Are there's we gonna nothing, have any this year? There's nothing in any of those. Yeah. Well there's not in the past five years worth of data. Maybe it's somebody somewhere else. Maybe those are free. Yeah, we haven't had any since 2019. Okay, right, because this is 2019. Um, expense for those. 10% GL taxes. Interest on loan, you just tell me when you want your stuff. Um, and, we have to purchase a property for that year. Huh? You need to purchase a property? What? Tax tax. Tax, yeah. Is there any oh, other? Yeah. yeah. Are there any others on this first page that interest stand on out? Loan, interest on loan payments. That's not a Rosemary item, although she probably has way more knowledge than I do on this. Is, Definitely. Is that, that That's is. That is the interest that we pay on equipment that we have loans on for the highway that directly ties back to the highway equipment reserve fund. So basically uh, that spreadsheet that is our capital reserve spreadsheet needs to be updated in order to generate that interest number. Yeah. Does it really does it really need to be updated? I mean well we budgeted thirteen thousand seven hundred. Huh? Last year we spent twelve and this year we're budgeting, so we, we took out, must have taken out a significant loan. Yes. Big, big loan. $390,000 or $70,000. Mm -hmm. so, so we did, yeah, we did pay what we got back for the other one on principal. Yeah. Okay. I think that we need to push out our purchase schedule one year. I think we already did. No, I don't think we did. Well, we I did last year, we, we pushed out the, the backhoe, and there was a big question about excavator or no excavator. We didn't do the excavator, we didn't do the backhoe. So, technically, we should have the discussion about what we're going to purchase this year. Because it's going to screw everything up if we if we get out of sequence. I just, want to do, I just want to push it out one year, and if you're saying we already pushed it out last year, I'll believe you, not Evan. You both say it. Well, back, back me up here, Evan. Am I right? Didn't yeah. we push the back out last year? No, we did. I think she, she's saying you need to back Evan up. No, no, no. I'm just well, saying, I, if I, you both I, agree, I'm not sure I trust my memory. Who's behind me? So in the highway budget, they budgeted 185000 for the back out. So this year, in the current year. That's what I mean. I don't think we pushed it out. Thank you, Tom. Well, we were supposed to buy it last year. But and I mean, think that our, you're saying our the schedule... 185 is for the year we're currently in? Correct. Okay, wait. When we did budgeting, not last year, the year before, all of the numbers that were used for that capital expense were clearly under expensed. Like the numbers did not, were wrong by 10,000 or more in most cases. But so it changed the balances. Like it changed the, our our uh, capital cash impact, and it meant we had a gap year. You're right. I do remember last year looking at our capital equipment and thinking that that we're gonna dip a little bit low, but it's not too low. I have to go pull up this sheet. It's not as low as what was in the top. It won't go in. It won't go in. It, well, it technically will, but not as low. Because the thing isn't this year or next year or the following year. It was like. 25 years out or something. Yeah. yeah. 
It was. It was 2029 20, or 2030 yeah. or something like that. So we need yeah. to, we just because you did due diligence in looking at that as well. We do. And what, what's important about that whole, what, what Beth is alluding to, I think, <clears throat> is that the, the items were not being updated on an annual basis to reflect their inflationary value. Yeah. Uh, and trading value. So you didn't know how much to save in your capital equipment fund, so you were under, you had your amount was too small for the actual purchase price. The amount that was being yes. proposed for the purchase, purchase price item was, was too low. low. Got it. So, so we were, yeah, the funding side of it, like we thought we were in good shape until the, the, the rubber hit the road. I have an old spreadsheet to do that. We where, already have it. Don't create anything. We already have one. Where you have the uh, original purchase price, the trade in value that you update every year. And then you have the new purchase price updated every year, and then you have a suggested yeah, reserve fund perfect. updated every year, and so that's how you know that's what to add exactly. into your capital exactly. fund every year. And, and on top of that, there is a up in the upper right hand corner of that spreadsheet, there is loan and loan and loan amortization schedules, yep. so that we know what the principal amount is we're paying and the interest amount. So that line item that Evan is talking about in here. It's just generated simple from that. $24,174.94. Oh, shoot, I lost my line with the line number. Will you email me that spreadsheet? I've never seen such a thing. Yeah, it, it got updated a lot. And this ties a lot. Do you have the most recent? The highway budget as well. Yeah. Yeah, I have the most recent. Um, that's one of my favorite things to do. That was done last year. As I call all the dealers and say, hey, this is what we got. And take a look. And then you figure out if your exact trade in value. So then you know that difference, right? But was the so what's payment the interest on that? for the greater ever updated? Because when we purchased the greater, we okay. took we took out a loan for the whole amount. And no, then we just lost that hundred thousand dollars. We got we approved a loan before we sold our other greater. The new greater was here on the lot before we sold our other one. We only took a loan out less than hundred thousand dollars we got. So we didn't take a loan out until we sold our other grader a month after we had it. We didn't yeah. have to because we had the cash in our reserves. So we paid for it in cash and then we took a loan. They didn't out. bail us until after we got it, right? Right. So that we were able to. Okay. I think you're right. Yeah, I think we were right. able to. Right. Yeah. So that's why I, I thought we. We the previous year's budget was a lot lower than we thought it would be because we didn't pay the other interest on the data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's got to be updated. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'll send it to you tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, that's a long, hairy way of saying yes, please, Dr. Rose, maybe I interest on loan payments, but that number is a relatively known number by the sheet, right? You said it's, how much was this there was? Uh, our sheet last year has it in there as... 24175 yeah. yeah. But the house is paying $11,500 interest on the greater, and if Rosemary's saying that's the lower interest rate. Yeah. Well, just, I think yeah, that was only for a partial year, too. So. Once we get the, you know, that's a great question for the next two weeks. I'll update that spreadsheet to match and reflect actuals. Are we going to buy any equipment next year? Going to use a loan? That's, that's a sixty-four dollar question. That's a real big headache, right there, Rosemary. Right, I think that's what we're just knocking. Well, I mean, Jason if has you said tobacco it. this year. Next year, there's a truck, right? Next year, there's two trucks. Two trucks. Hang on. Next year's the uh, twenty eighteen. International, which I think is actually 2019. And the foreman pickup, although that was supposed Usually to. You pay cash for that. Yeah, but that does come out but of the But it comes out of the fund. Okay. But that was supposed to be shifted to 26, 27, anyways. Because when we approved the new truck, that was part of the contingency of the approval, and it doesn't look like it was ever actually shifted where it was supposed to be. You should do that. We may, just one person. we may have to take the better part of one meeting just to look at the case. 
Yeah. We'll have to take we'll it to probably two minutes. Rosemary okay. and I talked a little bit on the phone about it, and then Jason and I talked about when I met with Dan from International um, about maybe shifting our truck schedule to be on an every other year basis. So we do six year um, we still own our power. I'm not sure if you guys purchase here. Or Let's not talk about that. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, <laughs> getting our routine schedule so that way it's all planned. Evan knows the capital budget. Um, Evan I'm is your capital budget. Is something different. But really excited. Yeah. We can't do it in this budget. Yeah. For tonight, um, Shane was asking about anything else on that page. Admittedly, I talked to Duncan earlier today. And I would like the emergency management reserve fund expense to be raised to ten thousand dollars from seventy five hundred. That is fifty dash seven dash ten dash ninety three. Yep, that's a good. Is everybody copacetic with that? Yep, I'm supportive. Uh, Conservation Commission expense. Have you talked to Lois? Not yet, Lois Gray. Her, uh, we, yes. Uh, One of the nicest people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, one of my favorite places to go is the historical house as well, and the bath. Strong presence there as well. Tree board talked to Sue. She's Lover. <laughs> she's their chair. And yeah, I will have. Um, I'll, I'll talk to the Immigration <coughs> Justice Committee and see if they are interested in reaching out to you. So you did talk to Lois. You said already. Um. About, so I met with the historical. Association, our society, we talked about reducing expenses, and Lois was there, and I did broach the subject of reducing by 5% percent class level funding. And that won't happen. Yep. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that but that wasn't about conservation. It was about historical, and she said, what about conservation? And I said, yeah, that's how okay. it comes I think she's also on the tree board. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty, I, after that meeting, I did get a few phone calls and had a few conversations. Yeah. Um, what is Conservation Commission R? Reserve fund. Oh, oh, oh. So that, we put it about 500 and... That's because uh, they asked for it last year. Yeah. Got it. So it was zero to two years. Got it'll, it. it'll be zero. I mean, it's, it's requested. Uh, I believe that it's zero because initially they were rolling their surplus into that line item and then it was found out that they need that reserve fund was set up where they need to request an allotment. Am I right, Rosemary? Mm -hmm. So keep it zero. They'll, re they'll request 500 and we'll either grant it or not. Should I put end of your expense at 500? Yeah. Okay. The next page. Solid waste and landfill. We spend a lot of money on trash rolls there. That's trash and landfill testing. <clears throat> That's landfill testing. Did we not? Didn't their rates go up? Probably. There was an email that went out about that. Just our dumpster alone is over five hundred dollars a month. The town dumpster. The one at the office. No, at the garage. At the garage. Yes. The testing at the landfill. I thought there was a quote that went out about that. For me, maybe the email was that the state was picking up the increased costs or something. Yeah, well, it's, it's Am I thinking two the wrong? Different. There's monitoring at the old mill park. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, the cell the place the and the mill park. Yeah. And they all knew that same line or different line? Uh -huh. the brown I don't field. know. I believe the monitoring at the top mill was paid by the state. Exactly. Okay, so maybe that's where I was confused. So uh, they bill us. They bill we us. We can sign off on it, but the state pays it. Yeah. But where do we where do we assign the expense to? We we don't actually pay anything on the ground. Okay. It's just you just like a sign off that it was. I don't. Know, I guess that you to do it maybe, <laughs> but it actually comes out of the. We're not actually paying it. Not for the top mill, no. There's a big project for 35000 on the table right now that I'm waiting for confirmation to see if we like, we sign off on it. Is it done or do we have to? Because it's larger than the normal testing. The first testing we had to pay a certain amount. 
the mistakes to go away after that. Okay. Yes, it was. Um, so for Racial Justice Committee, I just want to note for the last time that their expenses bumped, I know that they're not active right now, but the last time their expenses bumped up, it was to offset expected revenue sources that they thought were going to come in, because that wasn't their, that wasn't their flat expense. There was, um, they were applying for grants, so I just want to throw that out there a bit. If there is a request for funds, we should just make sure that we're looking at both revenue and funds and uh, expenses. Yes. Yeah, it wouldn't put that 33, 40. Right. And they're, again, they're not on this sheet, right? You might know. They are, they're, they're, they're on the first page. On the bottom. On oh, the bottom, bottom of the first page. page. They've already I think, passed, but. Uh, oh, yeah. They're not, they're not currently active, so I think yeah. Shane's going to look into that, and if they want to be active, then we can put something in there, but they're not going to be active. Yeah, I mean, it seems to me that they've well, we're on completed their task, but... Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, we'll find that out, and we'll run it. And miscellaneous expense, like, we slow that, looks like, sometimes. What gets put in there, Rosemary? I <laughs> couldn't answer. <laughs> I mean, like. I like it. Over, oops, shoot. You couldn't buy five, 20 less of miscellaneous items this year? Um, over time, the miscellaneous items average $1,800. Not so why don't we go to 1800? Oh, I think we should put a zero for miscellaneous and then put it in a category. Well, the, I, I don't disagree with, I don't, I'm not sure I agree with putting in zero, but miscellaneous, you should only put something in that just simply doesn't fit in any other category. And, and like, so I like, think that we need to be accountable if that's the case, because we look at orders, and if we see things falling under miscellaneous, we should say that like we should question it. When you get audited, almost every single item in miscellaneous will be reviewed. Like that's like this that is a, a red flag for an auditor when it doesn't fall into an account. So just know two hundred dollars they're gonna uh, every single time. That's like they wanna see the you're in charge. You yeah. need to justify why it didn't fall into it reading it here another category. I'm gonna go home and just All right. Um being that we're Falling behind just a little bit. Rosemary is the head woman in charge, is what that stands for. That was, so the initial onset was discuss the four categories, right? And that finishes out select board expenses. Yep. And then Correct. We, we, have, we can go down to building and grounds. I would like to just count office expense. Yeah, I guess we got to wait on that one. I guess we are going to wait on town office. No, I wanted to clear public safety quick, but oh uh, yeah, that's that. I got all the numbers today uh, from NEMS and Animal Control is going to be uh, hopefully less in the future, but this year we'll probably blow the budget after we sort out. Um, health officer seems. Uh, we bought those vests, those are going to fall in there, but it's not nominal. That 155594 is NEMS, actual amount. Um, what percent increase is that? I could do it, I didn't know if you uh, Um, Beth had sent something out about patrol. I spoke with uh, Roger and I can't remember that. It's a uh, three point eight six. Uh, and Beth said the three counts have not actually met yeah, with Roger. Yeah, and so I he said that they because of the way that it's factored with the you have to put your grandless value tied to it. Um, 
those amounts, uh, he said it was rough, it was safe to roughly put in, he calculated the draft budget and then percent increase, and so I took, he said it would be safe for us just to put in the percent increase of two point, I think it was 2.84 and 2.87 2 and 2.94% for um, the law enforcement and dispatch. Put those amounts in and it's going to be pretty close, but a lot of you can't say for sure. You can say how to manage. Have you talked with Scott about coming in to a board meeting? He usually does, doesn't he? What's your name, Scott? Yeah. North Disability oh, Medical, yeah. Medical Services. Um, I spoke with him on the phone and he um, he actually mailed the budget. And he did? He, okay. he mailed the budget today. And then I called him and said, hey, what does this actually mean for Johnson? You know, this is the whole NEMS budget, but what does this mean for us? And, and then that's where he gave me the route of off right away. That one five 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 nine four. So I guess for me, the only thing that we can really do with emergency services is provide them. The other thing that we should talk about, did he mention asking the town to put an article in exempting? That was that's on my list of things to talk about. That was a one time thing. So this is no, it's not. It's every five years. Right. Is, or we um, didn't do it last. They had it at a special town meeting, and that's why it's not on a regular town meeting. So it's, article two, exactly. He'll know what that is when I call Scott. Yeah. He, he wanted us to do it last year, and it was basically too late to get it done. So we'll get that. We could have right we could have held a special town meeting. We could have done it. What does he want to make it exempt? Like, uh, what is that? The ambulance building. Oh, the, yeah. the ambulance building is actually located in Johnson. Yeah. Yep. And so he wants he and they pay property tax on it. Exactly. He wants to fall under the exempt property. Yeah, and it doesn't make sense in one sense, but by them paying the tax and Johnson being responsible for one fifth. It's a little bit more than one field because the population. It's like 41%. Yeah. Um, we actually pay more by having to pay a property tax than we would if it was exempt. Because you have to pay the statewide educational tax. In essence, if they were taxed, we would collect about. It sounds counterintuitive. No, no, I it would works out. We would because collect. 70% about say it's $5,000. 70% 70, 70 of that goes to the school. Right. Yeah. But if it was exempt, so you're only paying. You're paying forty-one percent of five thousand now, but you oh, actually only be. But we collect all. We're the losing. We're only really losing yeah. thirty percent. Yeah, it's just something for us to remember we when, would, when it comes to develop our warrant. We collect about twelve hundred dollars in revenue, and we spend about eighteen hundred. So I'm going to. Um, I'll but that call him and just say, hey, what's the language? Let's just get it on the line. He should make a formal request. Like yeah. That. that conversation needs to be tied to his budget number because. If he's carrying taxes and it goes for tax exemption, it needs to be lowered. Okay, that's great. Am I wrong? No, I think you're right. So, article to exempt for warning and uh, readjust. I'm going to adjust budget accordingly. And uh, it might be a best thing when she meets with the other chairs. But I would, the only thing on the sheriff's department is I would like. Some wording in the contract, similar to men's contract. We haven't talked about that. Well, the town owns the equipment. No, we don't own it with NEMS. But if NEMS were to ever dissolve and move away, it would be dispersed between the contract towns. It wouldn't even go back solely to us. It would be like all sets. Of assets would be sold, and then from that it would be dispersed. If it were to dissolve, because it's fully funded from taxpayer, well. Not fully funded. There's bills that they send, but the equipment is funded by the taxpayers in essence, kind of. Yeah. Oh, that's what I mean. That's really fun. I would like to see so that in the sheriff's the contract. Cruisers and the uniforms are, are a couple of things that are definitely funded directly by the tax corporations. Wholeheartedly, yep. Um, we can have this conversation again when it's time to renew the contracts. Do you want me to do that now, or do you want me to wait on that? I don't know. If do you want to bring that up in your conversation, Beth? We are meeting on the... <clears throat> oh yeah, I'm going to be late for the next step board meeting. Because it's that night. Okay. 
I would think that there would be something all three towns would be interested in. Is yeah, that um, a great idea, dude? I've run into that. Is that public safety? Yeah. Right. I mean, that's like true democracy and government. Yeah. Like, that's really that's right. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Public safety category. So that is wrapped yeah. up. Uh, well, a I high have, level overview. Okay, of well, you didn't ask if I had any information on this. I do. I'll just wrap it up. Yeah. On the sheriff's department. On the sheriff's department. I'm just asking. Is it the same one that you Is the number, is your number going to be significantly different than what Tom has been in here? I don't know what Tom is getting. The number in the spreadsheet here, let's see. Five or is it's it three percent on this. Yeah, 2.8 something. No, it's just three for us. Like, forget everything that they do above. It's the bottom part where it says assessment for Johnson is three percent. So if we do adjust the but the thing is, okay, here's the thing is that I would like to maybe push back on. I don't know yet that we can do this. If I'll look back to future years, I guess is what I should say, is that the percentage used is based on the consistent population. Yeah. This is the no. combination. Nem, this is, is combination. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Population. No, D Duncan's right. It's grand list half, and half population. Grand list, half population. With this one, yeah. With this one. And floods affected our numbers. And it, it affected the presence of the sheriff's department in our town, I would argue, too. So, They're up in Walcott. <laughs> yeah, they probably are. Walcott's probably happy about that. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so it's three percent for all the towns, but I think I probably am going to ask if there's been any consideration for <clears throat> population decrease because I think we lost a lot of people. Our grand list may have suffered, but we'll only you know that. I guess next we year. It may not be a thing we can resolve this year, but next year probably. Yeah, I think the pushback from them would probably be well, you know, you know, we have to use some numbers. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> and that's fair. Anyway, if we really want to look for any kind of actual savings on the budget, we need to look at something less than 24 hour coverage. I agree. I 100%. I don't think Roger's open. He's not at all open to it. He's, he's been very much. opposed to it in the past. So. What's, your, uh, mm -hmm. what's your closest state plates? Jeff, but there are less satellites. Yeah, so it's Williston, Williston or Waterbury, Middlesex. 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 So when you call 911, do you which No, no. Sheriff's department. It goes because dispatcher sheriff is a secondary piece out. So, um, It'll be interesting to see how much of our sheriff's department use has dropped with the decline in enrollment here. This used to be a big, big use of the sheriff's department is here in Laraway. Mm. But Laraway makes a contribution to the sheriff's department. Yes, they do. That's why they in, in the name of Johnson? It's an uh, alternative why? school yeah. All right. down on Route 15. It's our largest right employer. Right for the farm. I think it's the largest employer in town right now. The Laraway. It used to be the Laraway home for trouble youths, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Anyways, are we Is that all public in understanding on um, public safety expense, or do you have more? If Beth is saying that they should go by 3%, I think that they should reflect 3% here. Um, she <clears throat> she needs a lot more into going with a lot of than I am. Yeah, I just got the draft budgets, and on the bottom it said percentage. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yep, yeah, that was right. <laughs> Oh, so the, um, town office expenses or what? Looks like there's an awful lot of filling that needs to be done on that one. So uh, that one I uh, oh, Rose, Rosemary. Yeah, you got, you got Rosemary's name next to a lot of those. Yeah, and she she said she would take care of that, and um, her and I will sit down. I'll put in the numbers. And, mm. and so I I did have a question for Rosemary on that. Um, how much did it cost you in the past? I know um, at least the COVID year, and I believe there was one other election that all ballots were mailed out. How much did that cost um, on top of this estimated 2000? You mean the town meeting ballots? Yeah. I was going to say the election expenses right here. Did the state pay for that? 
The no. feds? Do we have to pay for it? They only pay for their federal and state. Federal and state. Yeah, they don't so pay for it was that. doubled in the 2022 fiscal year for postage. <coughs> postage was $8,400 compared to the prior year of $4,500. And the following year was $5,000. So pretty much doubled that. And year. you could only send out town ballots. You could not send out ballots. Because the whole school district would have to vote to send them out. That's right. And then yeah, COVID made, year. It was very confusing that we have to keep I was going to say, you only looked at postage, just the actual. I was not done. Okay. <coughs> and then <coughs> office supplies was for the year, fiscal year ending 21, so that was COVID year, was 5,200 compared to 35 before. And then equipment. Oh, that's equipment. Oh, that was when we got the ballot, the ballot counter. Did we pay for that? Yeah. No. What did we get a big equipment? Uh, we had a big equipment purchase for 26,000. For what, what year? Uh, fiscal year 21. Which line are you on? I'm just reading them down here, Mom, 203. Yeah, but you're on, year. you're on equipment purchase current year, so whatever's left over there oh, goes the into the reserve fund for buildings and grounds. Okay, why are you pointing at me? Because I, I just think you the most messed up line to fund the reserve fund. An extra twenty thousand in, in there just, 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 just to go into the building the grand fund. And, and uh, uh, for just say. election expenses. What no, was, this is actual. Oh, actual is going to come out as an actual. Expense. What was election yeah. expenses in that year? It, it was went up 40, three times. It was forty-eight hundred. It did not go up. It doubled. Yeah, went from fourteen hundred. In 2019, 2020. Okay, then so it was 40, 4,800. And then it was 2,000. And then it was 1,600. So there's a little bit of bubble there. Does that answer the question? It does. My only question is what's our buildings and ground reserve fund look like, and what do we foresee coming up as large expenses to think about what to put in that line? Huh? You gotta finish power. <coughs> love to bring that tower up, don't you? We do have to finish the roof leak. And we we only have to pay for half of that. <laughs> yes, in well, theory. <laughs> the painting the bridge would come out of the bridge and culvert reserve fund, wouldn't it? Yes. Oh, yeah. You like the idea of the color. Huh? You like the idea of the Like fire and red. So that. In a quick nutshell, so, what, there's only sixteen thousand in the buildings and grounds fund. Well, that's reservations in ten. I've lost track of it. You're gonna have to keep up or run. It has only two more until you go that way. Okay. Yeah, move faster. Really slow. What were we supposed to be thinking about this now? I was supposed to be thinking about oh, something and I forgot. Are we put forty five thousand dollars to be talking about the clock tower? No, that's what we're thinking No, about. don't talk about the clock tower. Mark's been into that, right? Somebody suggested Mark and I were gonna do it. About taking the clock out of the clock tower and I take it to Brilliant. <laughs> Was he out? Did Duncan talk to you about putting a digital one in there? <laughs> I didn't say a word. I don't know. I don't understand this. I like that idea. <laughs> but the, well, idea was it? To, no one can read a clock uh, anymore. Well, I, I, we'd have to put something back in. I, I, we could put a picture of Mickey Mouse up there and be okay with me. Here's the thing that I think is a valid point: is that it is a, a weird situation, and it's very gray. And like, either a the town should own the building, or b the nation should own the clock. But like this weird thing is, it doesn't matter. Marks so on it. You're on your notes. Just marks are our, our they're just gonna figure it out. Right. I have a comment to make. Right? <laughs> what? Um, I'm not sure if you ever looked at that sheet. The sheet. My comment that is that you know I did meet with the the I think the clock <coughs> with their person um, who does all of the tower clocks in the window, and I met with him. I took him up in the tower, showed him it, and like why not? Um, I would like to keep the line item in there because he he charges five hundred and fifty dollars to come and tune up the clock, and I would like him to come and do that with me. Um, <coughs> not that we could necessarily get it running for long periods of time because the columns are so out of whack that the drive box will not work for more than a few days. 
Um, <clears throat> but I would still like to keep a little bit of money in there. And if you folks really care about clocks, he would he could also make the the electric clock that's at the town clerk's office work, um, which is never worth a day in the slight as far as I can tell. All the town. So you're talking about doubling the expense? Talking so about putting it to eleven hundred. To eleven hundred, yes, yeah, so I heard it. Yeah. Let's be clear. Mark, have you talked to well, so Gene Richards by any chance about the, the clock there? Still Gene, Gene Richards? Yeah, the uh, new owner of the one now. No. Okay, no. he's expressed some interest in getting it up and running, and Good. I, I think well, you can talk to the people at the Masonic Lodge as well. So. I the Masonic the Masons are not interested in yeah, the moment no, fixing no. the columns. Right. But um, I will <laughs> talk to Gene when it comes around to it, and maybe do some fundraising if it. The, the Masons were nice enough to paint the tower this summer, which they did pack it. Yeah. You know, Why didn't they have to? It's theirs. The so, Tom, I don't know if it's still there on your list, but we actually no, have No, there's still there. There, there was an email that was from the, Brian. Building some brass. About, uh, some of the last day. They found some sort of record proving that the back clock came along. So, we didn't have to be lost already. We, so we, paid, we paid for the reservation. I know we did, but we shouldn't. I love it. 1100 I left it blank because. <laughs> and if uh, we have to put another nickel in, I wasn't sure if it was going to I'll be totally against it. It's the 45000 clock tower. Tens of thousands of dollars. And it's still a piece of paper. Where is that? Oh, I see it's right there. If we have to put any money in, I think it would be a wonderful thing to take the clock out of there and put it somewhere where people can actually see it. it and make it a working clock? Make it a working clock? Wouldn't that be cool? I sent you a picture of the one in Concord, didn't I? Yeah. It's like absolutely a working clock. If it's in like a giant glass square okay. so you can see um, all the gears and everything. Yeah. Do you know how many, you need at least <laughs> so you 30 feet. What are you doing here? Can, that clock is oh. very similar. They did a lot. They did a series of polls. Don't get. Do we have a gallon? Can, can we put eleven hundred dollars in there for the town clock expense and try to move forward? I'm I am. I'm I am excited about it. I'm fine with it. Yeah. I think we need to break it up. Well, so that's a long term project. That isn't it is. That's a different. No, but so, I'm talking about this guy coming by and looking at both clocks. Okay, we got it. And we're budgeting for it. Got it. Okay, next. Moving on. Do it. Um. The last thing in grounds and um, buildings and grounds, I would like to revisit the idea of fencing the Grove Cemetery, which would mean that cemetery maintenance would need to be increased. I only <coughs> increased it fifteen hundred dollars last year. We haven't spent any. Yeah, I, I think, think that's, uh, I think there's not been great luck getting somebody to bid. Did Brian ever work with you on an RFP for cemetery maintenance? Because we had discussed it. It was before the flood, <clears throat> not too long before the flood. Bro, no, it was Brian was still here. Okay, I know, but like, what are we, what are we doing, Spencer? Yeah, is this? I mean, putting in fence is that something the highway department could do under the public works? The landowners are willing to help put in labor. Yeah, Brian. Brian put out an RFP for fencing, and it was eight thousand dollars or something. Yeah, 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 you're right. It was, it was, a, lot. It was a lot of money. Yeah. Very expensive. Yeah. Right. And we met with the landowner. One of the adjacent landowners came to a meeting and said that they would do it if we supplied the material. I I don't know. We have seven five hundred dollars. What if we just try? I get at least the front of it done. I think it might be. I mean, it. there's already <coughs> semblance uh, of a fence. So I, so I think it's the sides on the back. The big, the fence. big issue is the side against uh, against uh, White Hills White. Garage because he keeps encroaching in the cemetery. Yeah, yeah. A couple of years ago, he was plowing in there and knocked over headstones. I think. Yeah. yeah. So we need. Uh, Probably a boundary line agreement and a firm. We are, well, pretty Brian already staked it once, but it's really long gone. Yeah, I, I thought that we should actually get a written agreement with um, with uh, Carrie Whitehill, um, codifying. It's Winona, though, right? Well, his name's on the deed, too, isn't it? I don't think so. Let's look it up. I think, I think that's great. Make a handshake, get a written agreement, and then just say, okay, here it is, and put it up. If I awesome. wants to put a fence up, great. Yeah. 
I would still like next year an RFP put out for cemetery maintenance. I would too. Yeah, we're gonna fall. We're gonna fall behind. Even yeah. even evergreen ranch hasn't got any maintenance. Yeah. Ages. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Isn't so, Whiting Cemetery close where we could do one year and we could get all the stones prepared? I got Whiting Hill over half done, probably, and I cleaned all of the stones. You know, there are still quite a few stones that are broken and down <clears throat> that need to be repaired, but you know, if we if we were able to get somebody to do it, I, to be honest with you, I think the way to do that might be to advertise to see if we could hire somebody to do it as a part-time job during the summer. That would be but, great. So what do we budget? We used to budget ten thousand dollars a year for cemetery maintenance. What are we down with seventy five hundred? And does that include Maui or that's just No, that's no, just yeah. that's there's just another line for fixing that. and repairing stones. Does this one really say that we could create a plan so that way every year you tackle X? So like each cemetery, like the point, like you said, one cemetery a year. Eventually, you're going to be caught up, and there's not going to be many. The most knowledgeable person on cemeteries in this town is not me. I don't. I would like to believe that that's the case, but as soon as you start, those stones, especially the marble stones, get dirty really quick. Yeah. Um, oh, I see. Maintenance is cleaning and maintenance is cleaning and repairing the stones. And a lot of the stones are so-called slab stones. They're literally just yeah. placed in the mm -hmm. ground, and they fall over. Um, when I was repairing them, I would put them back with stone On foundation. again, so it would, it would drain. Yeah. And those stones are holding up very well. So yes, I think, I mean, in theory, you're probably right. We could get to a point where the substantial amount of work is done. But boy, just just fixing one stone. I I volunteered to fix a couple of stones in Plot Cemetery, and I spent hours and hours and hours gluing them up, and you know, then I was glad to do it. But if you were to hire somebody to do that, it'd be thousands of dollars. So up it to ten grand. We'll look at it when we look at the budget. People give us money to get buried in these cemeteries and do that. Just every Is it sixty five dollars? That's open still. How much is a plot? Twenty maybe five? No. Is it? I thought there was less than that. It's actually a pretty good deal because you can put um, up to three cremations mm -hmm. in a plot and one burial. Most people are getting cremated these days, but right. we should we should allow natural burials. So, uh, so Leona I think owns we, the. I don't think there's anything that prevents it. Yeah, Leona's the only. Leona's the only one on the on the parcel, and everything other than the house is owned by Kyle Bidwell and Sarah Little. So. Are there any? So the house we, we said ten thousand for cemetery maintenance. Is that correct? That's what we, I mean, we budgeted 10 years ago. I don't, I don't think we should, I don't think we should reduce it from 7,500. The house is 0.39 acres. Hmm. It doesn't encompass, well. Are you looking at a parcel map? Yeah. Does it look like it is entire? Do you see the, the white square, square around it? <clears throat> so the, this is the parcel. It's literally around the house, yeah. and all of the other stuff is outside. And where's the cemetery? Right here. Okay, so it does border most of the cemetery. It border, yeah, most of it borders that one, the that right one side line. of the. Cemetery. And that's that's the line that's really kind of critical. This for is the offensive. Yeah. <coughs> and that's there's evidence on the ground there. There's trees. There's I mean that's not 100. Those aren't usually perfect. You won't find. Actual land records on that. Yeah, I, looked. I can send you a boatload of emails that I got in the past from somebody <coughs> that did a lot of research on that. Um, it used to be part of Sterling, right? Mm -hmm. Public records in Morristown. Yep, that's uh, where he went. I looked in Morristown. And one of the things I found was that you know, Deanna. Um, French had been there and tried to find it, but she couldn't find it. So I said, if Deanna couldn't find it, I'm not going to find it. 
So do we have any other questions, concerns, comments about those four sections? Um, I should put the inspector on the land around it. So, cemetery mowing and town property mowing, is that going to go out to bid? It's like 35 different mines. And if you could get that out to bid by like April. How about right now? If go you for could it. get like 25 people to throw bids on, you would probably have a, a well, really just, happy spot. for he has an RFP already set up to do it. I would probably just get it ready for December 6th. <coughs> connect me in December and just close. Just the list of properties is really confusing because we share with the village. Make sure that the um, strips along Railroad um, Street are included no, on the list. Completed. Because well, they I'll, have I not been mowed this year. Or I'll sit mowed this year. down with Rosemary probably and make sure you know, I make sure all the we have to check with the village trustees about that. Yeah, okay. the, they, they, the village was never so, doing Railroad Street. No. Right. Yeah. Hasn't that street. been? No. What wasn't it the understanding that we were supposed to be doing Railroad Street? That was my understanding. Yeah, but it doesn't. Like the point is that it's really just a mess, and somebody needs to sit down and figure it out. That's because everybody you talk to is going to give you a different answer. The landowner should be doing that. In my opinion, on railroad street. Agreed. Okay. Well, this is um, good actually. I'll put it through. by creating the RFP. We're going to solve all of these questions. Yes. We're just going to go forward. Everything's going to be yeah. better. I'm like, it doesn't matter whether the town pays for it or the village pays for it. Somebody's getting taxed. That's your thing. Village trustees. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have any money, so. Yeah, they're broke. Can so what? Broke. What's the plan? Are, at our next meeting, are we attacking different sections? So now we have everything. Uh, if this is, I'm going to put all this together, and then I'm going to put all the other groups together. I'm going to have outstanding questions um, that I'll prepare and send out, and then so then we'll just be able to run through, hopefully by by using the now using the master spreadsheet, putting all the numbers that came back from the subsections, putting these numbers in. Now we should be able to see. We're just going to answer the questions, and then in real time, maybe at the next meeting or the following meeting, we can see the percent increase. Once we know the total increase or the total decrease, then we can start attacking the items that we say, hey, maybe we shouldn't raise the here. When you say other sections, you mean? Like uh, historical's already done, library's done, highway's mostly done. I think. Wait, what do you mean by it's done? Meaning you've yeah. done it, but we haven't talked about it? I don't even know how library could do it because I think we owe it to the village at the very least to kind of come up with a percent increase for our employees next year so that we can budget it and carry it for the six months. And the library, as long as I've been on the board, has mirror image what the select board has done. I don't even know where they came up with a number for salaries. If they weren't. So, um, when I met with them, the directive at that time was 5% less this year, 0% increase next year, but that didn't include salary and benefits because that was at that time, that's what you said don't include. And so, when I say done, that's what okay. they've done everything else. And that's the sheets you sent out before? Yeah. As but so now I'm going to compile the them. highway one. I would be really curious to know where the capital equipment purchase came from. Two hundred thousand. Yeah, that was in there as two hundred thousand. That's budgeted as one hundred sixty-five last year, and I actually don't think it should be one hundred sixty-five. It bumped up to that because of a year-end surplus of two years before, and they just bumped everything up. Yeah, there's a there's a long-term plan that had seven thousand dollars increase every year. And then when so. I just put together numbers with Jason, sat down, and it took a couple hours. I'd be curious to know where that number came from. Yeah, I think so. Maybe what we should do is at the next meeting, maybe go over all of those before we compile one at a time and invite. And to kind of do the same thing we did here, and that way by the middle of December, we should have, we can compile and answer all of all those questions answered. Does that feel like a good plan? If you update that spreadsheet, the capital plan spreadsheet for the highway, that will generate the number that should go in that line item. Are you saying you want to do highway next? <clears throat> no, I was saying it was a question I had. So. Because we either should wrap up general 
<clears throat> which would be library, rec, historic society, and revenue. Salaries and benefits, library, rec, skate park, historical, Tuesday Night Live, first expense, and we also need to look at revenue because we should be looking at those things that compare together. Like rec should be compare, we should be looking at both revenue and expense for rec and getting all of rec covered. And the same with skate park and historical. Um, and I know historical is confusing. You get it? How much work would it be to get all historical society expenses in the historical society section? You know, I think there's a really good question there. Like, Initially, the Holcomb House was not just historical. It had this like rent piece, so that it feels like maybe that's why the accounts were put there. Is my assumption. Mm -hmm. But now that that building is kind of run by one entity, Rosemary, would it be hard to to pull out all the Holcomb stuff and put it with historical? We're still getting the rental income from Donnie's apartment. Donnie's apartment. There's another one that we got to talk about, and. Could we not show the revenue for Donnie's apartment in their revenue section? It's not in their revenue section. To the town? To the <laughs> My point is, if you're arguing that the reason that $12,000 is not in the historic society's expense is because we're not showing the Thirty-eight hundred dollars in revenue. We could just show that revenue under the revenue, couldn't we? Show the expense where it lies. Show the revenue where it lies. Under Holcomb, that's rent. Right, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It was currently a line item under revenue. Wait a minute. That's right. So under the historical society revenue, it's not under the historical society. No, I'm saying that revenue could just be tucked there. And then the expenses could come out of buildings and grounds and go on historic society expense. But they don't get the revenues. They also <clears throat> don't eat the extra expense. But that, it's showing the taxpayers what a real cost is. That's interesting because the revenue. Well, we could just call the whole section Holcomb House, Holcomb House not Historic Historical Society. We don't have, like. Or we could uh, just call it Historical slash Holcomb House. House. If, if the revenue is under Holcomb House, or, I mean, under historical, the revenue is under the general, the select board revenue, and it, it still goes to the general fund. Like, it, you know, it doesn't really, it, but it would show the building, the building revenue and expense which has some value. That would at least show the taxpayers. Maybe that's just me. There is a separation between the two, though. Do we want to try and tackle that in this budget year? Or do we want to have to go for another <laughs> Duncan's like, September. as soon as I'm off the board, huh? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 these are big <laughs> fundamental right changes. Here. Here. Here for election I am. I could get voted out. No. If I even run. No. It's not right an option. In. Um, I mean, the other one, that um, the timing of the payment that the town makes to itself does this matter? for the historic does society? Discussion? Can we just cut both does of those matter? lines? Can, can we, oh, we're talking about historic society. Can okay. we just cut both those lines? Zero them out? Is that actually we can't just time zero them out if they have history against them. Well, we could zero expense, zero revenue. Yeah, I mean, because it, it's not really happening. You know, it's just a general ledger entry. It's not an actual movement money. Is it a little bit of money? So it's just there. Is it an auditing problem if we do that? I'm not saying delete the line. I'm saying zero it out. If we zero it out for three years, we know what I mean. What's the line? I didn't make the line. Oh, <coughs> you Red and me. Red Silk assigned the place to the town. Yeah. Oh. Which is the town making a payment and then shown as revenue to itself. But so they're still paying from, like... What are they paying? If they're giving, essentially taking money out of the pot of money that they've collected, however they're collecting it, and reallocating it to a different purpose, which is for ge town general use, we should show that that transfer happened. 
I don't think it actually does. Uh, does it change responsibility? Who's responsible for those that budget information, that budget line? It's always in the general fund, and whether whether you have an account that says historical association or transportation or you know, and it doesn't matter because the select board is responsible for all of it. So you're so you're. It's just, not about. To me, it's about visibility. It's the same reason we want to have those other things separated out when we talk about salary. Yeah, I mean, to me, I think it's just it, it feels like you're using you raise taxes to pay rent and receive rent. But not all of the historical society in general is tax general. Right. Yes, it's not. But they that, generate a fair amount of their own revenue. They do decent, Which, but that's why I was saying if we got it more accurate to what the actual expense is, you would know, instead of having to look in multiple different sections. I, the specific I line item I was talking around. about was the contribution in lieu of rent. Yeah, and that to me feels funny, like you have a town supported entity in a town bought building, all of their money is essentially the towns, even if they did the fundraising, then them paying the town for rent feels kind of weird too, right? Like no, the town just, rates. The town like the highway department doesn't pay for rent for their building either. You know, but that's a town supported entity and town support. There's, just, there's a whole backstory though, and they have their own nonprofit entity. Uh, yeah, that's it the was one. Very clear to me that they don't. It's not theirs, and it's not the town's. <laughs> it's not theirs. Well, it's it's, 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 it's known five hundred one c three. They're the it's like essentially an independent entity. You know? That's what I just said. It's right. an independent entity. That's what I said. Yeah, but it's, it's a not, non-profit. But it's not the historical associates. They're societies. No. Well, I mean, Who's they're, is it? They're, like, all, they're all a part of it, are they not? No, there's a different board of directors for the 501c3 than there is for the historical How many people on what that board What is the board purpose of, of the 501c3? The 501c3 was set up primarily to raise funds for the support of the historical society, and originally it was set up, so it's it's multi-purpose. It was um, potentially to buy a building um, and to uh, use use any funds in support of. So it's almost like a friends of the yeah. historical society, 501c3. Like the select board has no authority really over like library endowments, right? Just like the. This has, there's no authority over this 501c3. The Historical Society doesn't have any authority over the 501c3. Exactly. You know, they're like, it's, totally, it's its own thing. They're yeah. just the same people for the most part. Different it's boards. That's right. There yeah. are some, some of the same some, some some people. Some overlap. I would be willing yeah. to bet a decent we, amount. Well, yeah, what are we doing? Are we ready to leave? It is 10 p.m. We've been here for three and a half hours. Is there a chance that we're getting more through? places to be? I got ice cream to go buy. <clears throat> Where are you going to buy it? Maple Fields. Um, there you go. So, Benson, yeah. <coughs> what would you like? Uh, which sections of the budget would you Let's like? Let's finish the general. Let's get it done. And then do you want to bring on those other groups as well? And go over them or not? Have them all gone. Have them all gone. Uh, what do you say other groups would you? Oh, uh, historical library, skate park, rack. Do you want to go over those smaller sections at the next meeting, or do you want to save those? Uh, highway's a big one. Big one <laughs> highway, like our first year on the board, everything else took one meeting. Yeah. All of revenue and all of expense except for highway. Highway took a whole meeting. Highway's a big one. Yeah. No, like our first year. And then we went back over it. Yeah, like five times. And tell me we we're not going to have to do that again this time. When the rubber hits the road, what we end up with potentially as a budgeted surplus and what we can apply to as an amount to reduce taxes is going to tell the tale. Yeah. The that thing is that I don't feel like we actually got to the point where we got any reductions. We just carried everything over. No, so, we added some things. And we added stuff. Yeah. yeah. So maybe what we could do is let's focus on highway next time, try to get through it as best we can. And in the meantime, if you can circle back on all those other things and tighten up the things that aren't reduced that could be, yeah. that would be good. Including the things we haven't yet talked about, like, do that, like whatever prep work you have before we get back together. 
So December 6th plus 14 is the 20th. December 20th when we get back together, that we can go through that general budget. Next Honestly. meeting will be highway. The fourth will be highway, and the following will be, will be general, and including revenue. And in the meantime, if anyone has questions, ask them sooner rather than later, so that we can off meeting. Like hey, Tom, is your plan to take that spreadsheet and plug it into the, the big master yes. spreadsheet? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. That's that's it's all going to end up there. Okay. I was really confused. I'm at the fourth and the 18th. <laughs> fourth and 18th. Yeah. The fourth I'll be late because I'm going to the sheriff's department. All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion. 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 Motion.